You know it's this. Take a perk and talk it and see. Money swallowing like six. Did it perfect to the kid. Got a million who's sick on my head. Got a million better put on the road. I just win. I know we got a million dollars. The devil that's it and I chip it again. Hello and welcome back, fellow anime lovers, to Manga Muse. I am delighted to have you join us once again in the world of fanfiction and fantasy. This is the second part of What If Naruto Joins Digimon World. Special note, this fanfic is written in a masterpiece of Kitsune Dragon on fanfiction.net. Do check and support the author too. Now smash the like, share and subscribe button for more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss such great parts. Thanks for the introduction. Now let's dive into the world. Naruto and Doraemon were walking down the road to the Matsuki's bakery where Takato lived as Naruto wanted to get to know his fellow tamers better. Naruto walked through the door and smiled at the Matsuki parents. Ohio, Mr. and Mrs. Matsuki, is Takato in? Naruto asked. Oh, well if it isn't that nice boy from yesterday Mrs. Matsuki said. Of course she didn't question Doraemon since she thought he was still just a kid in a Digimon costume just like every other citizen of Shinjuku thought. My name is Naruto, Mrs. Matsuki, and yeah nice to you both again Naruto informed her. Mrs. Matsuki smiled. Of course, well then Naruto, Takato's in the park. He said he needed to take his box which he had a stray dog in. For a walk Mrs. Matsuki said, which Naruto interpreted as, he's getting rod of the dog. Mr. Matsuki frowned. Yeah, well he wouldn't be getting rid of it if you had let him keep the dog Mr. Matsuki mumbled. The female baker glared at her husband. Are we going to have this conversation again? She asked, I told you Takato's not old enough to have a pet Naruto, and Doruman's sweat dropped. So this is what Takato has to deal with I wonder what they would think if they knew that Gilman wasn't a dog. Naruto thought, humans are crazy Doraman thought. Well I'll go see him, Yanni Naruto said with a wave. Shinjuku Park Naruto and Doraman entered the park and looked around the main area, but saw no sign of Takato and Gilman. Where do you think they are? Naruto asked his Digimon partner. The purple dragon-like Digimon sniffed the air and pointed to a secluded area of the park. He's over there. I also smell bread Doraemon said with drool falling out of his mouth. Naruto's sweat dropped. I knew he would like the bread, but not this much Naruto thought. The two then walked along the path and found a small abandoned safe house of some kind. It was old and broken, but the gate to it seemed to be in good condition. There Naruto spotted the goggle-wearing tamer. Also he saw Henry standing with Takato. Oi, Takato, Henry. Naruto called out. Takato turned around and saw the blonde from yesterday. Hey, look Gilman it's the kid from yesterday. Narufo. No kudo. Takato told his Digimon. It's Naruto, Takato Henry said with a chuckle. Gilman and Terriermen looked at Naruto and Doraman and grins broke out on their faces. Narutaman. Doraman you are here the virus type Digimon said. Hore now we can play Gilman added with excitement. Then the dinosaur-like Digimon pulled out the bag of Brieg Takato gave him. Anyone want some bread? Gilman asked. I do Doraman said accepting the offer before he and Gilman began chowing down. Oh good, you're both here Naruto said with a smile. Takato and Henry looked at each other before going back to Naruto. You are looking for us? They asked the older tamer. Naruto nodded. Yeah, you see, I want to get to know you guys since I'm not familiar with any of you Naruto said. Then a thought crossed his mind. Come to think of it I'm not even familiar with this world either. Nanny, what do you mean by that? Henry asked. Naruto's eyes widened. Maybe I shouldn't have said that out loud Naruto thought. Naruto knew he was going to have to explain to them that he was a shinobi, so why not now? Naruto opened his mouth to explain when his enhanced hearing picked up on some sounds in the trees. Doraman stopped eating and immediately ran to Naruto's side, his normally round pupil changing into a vertical slit meaning he was ready to fight. Cower paw. A voice yelled from the trees. The yellow fox like Digimon. Renamon jumped out of hiding and aimed to hit Doraman in the face. But Doraman having trained his reflexes with Naruto in his tamer's mind, he easily sidestepped the attack and Renamon ended up forming a small indentation in the ground from her miss. Renamon then unexpectedly twisted her body while she was on her knees and then lashed out with a kick and struck Doraman in the snout sending the purple dragon into the trunk of a tree. I knew it. Your victory yesterday was just a fluke a female voice said. Oh, hey Rika-chan Naruto said with a smile. Rika slightly blushed, but changed that as she forced it down and glared at Naruto. Don't call me that, so are we gonna fight or not whiskers Rika said. Awa, that was mean, Rika-chan Naruto said with a playful pout. Rika didn't respond and remained impassive as always. Renamon, finished that sorry excuse for a Digimon off Rika ordered. Of course, Rika the fox Digimon said with a nod. Doraman groaned and rubbed his head in pain. Huso, girl you hit really hard Doraman said. Oh, poor baby Renamon said in a mock sad tone. 
Doroman glared at the fighting Digimon and looked to his tamer. Naruto, can I hit her? Just once please. Doroman asked. No, Doroman we came here to talk not fight Naruto said. Doroman glared at his tamer but nodded and stayed put. Oh come on Whiskers, your Digimon was made to fight Rika said. Not everything has to be about fighting Rika, Digimon were made to fight yes, but they have more capable uses than just fighting Naruto said. Oh really, such as? Rika asked. Let's not get into that. But it's nice to see you all here because I need to talk to you all Naruto said. Rika glared at Naruto before turning to leave. Renamon phasing next to her tamer and the two were about to walk away when they saw Naruto standing in front of them. Now, now, can't of you two leaving now can I? Naruto said with his trademark foxy grin. H how did he did you move so fast? The redhead asked. Yeah dude, that was really fast. I haven't even seen a Digimon move that fast without the use of the speed card Henry said. Takato, Gilman, Terrierman and Renamon remained silent, but stared in shock. That's what I want to talk to you guys about. You see as tamers we should get to know each other better and I want to know you guys better Naruto answered. The three 11, 12 year olds looked at the 13 year old blonde and sat on the ground waiting to hear his story. Renamon leaned against a tree with Doruman and Gilman and Terrierman laid on the ground with the tamers. Okay, you guys ready for this because my story is not going to be pretty Naruto said. The tamers nodded. Naruto smirked before starting. Okay, well as you all know my name is Naruto Yuzumaki Nemkazi and I am not of this universe. I was born in a world where shinobi or ninja as you guys call them, thrived using the energy we call chakra to perform feats only people like you could only dream about. Naruto said, I've heard about chakra, they say it's the mixture of the body's spiritual and physical energies, but I thought it wasn't real. Henry said, Naruto smirked and made a cage mention and then performed the racing in before the clone disappeared. Everyone stared in awe at the swirling orb of chakra in Naruto's hands. Well I can assure you Henry, chakra is very real Naruto said. Sugoi all the tamers said. Naruto then continued his tale. I lived on a single continent called the Elemental Nations which was comprised of five main lands. Hai no Kuni with the village of Konohagakure, Mizu no Kuni with Mizugakure, Keiz no Kuni with Sunagakure, Suchai no Kuni with Tsuchigakure and the final one being Rai no Kuni with Kumagakure. These lands were the most powerful lands in the entire continent with me hailing from Kanoha. Thirteen years before my birth, a giant demon fox called the Kyuubai no Kitsune attacked Kanoha and my father, the leader of the village sealed the beast inside me. Since then I joined the Shinobi Academy and I became a genin level Shinobi and joined a team with my teammates, Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno. We became good friends with each other after going on many missions together. However, during the exams that we had to take to become Chunin level, our team was attacked by an evil man by the name of Orochimaru, who I might add is a pedophile. Naruto said, Rika, Takato and Henry along with Fear Digimon shuddered at the thought of such a man. He planted something called the Curse Seal on my teammate, and he began to become consumed by darkness. Finally he reached the point where he betrayed my village and I was sent on a rescue team with a couple of my friends to go and bring him back. We fought hard and I had finally caught up to Sasuke at a place called the Valley of the End. We fought hard and we fought to the best of our abilities. In fact I was forced to use the Kyuubai's chakra and I defeated him by hitting with my racing gun which is the ball of chakra I showed you all earlier. I brought him back, but Sakura hated me for bringing him back because I hurt him so badly Naruto said dropping his head. Well, Naruto were you okay after that? Henry asked. Yeah whiskers I mean that had to have been traumatic Rika said, actually saying something. My pain must be like a prick on the finger compared to his she thought. Naruto looked up with a sad smile. It wasn't because I hurt Sasuke to such a degree they saw me as a threat especially since they knew of my use of the Kyuubai's chakra. They hated the demon inside me and wanted to kill me, get me out of the village or make me into a weapon. However, I was banished and I left the village. Luckily I told them all to burn in hell Naruto said in a jocund tone with a chuckle causing the others to chuckle a bit too. Anyways, after that I wandered the forests wondering what I should do now, and then I found this Naruto pulled the blue card out of his pocket. You have one too? Takato asked, his eyes widening. Well I am a tamer, all tamers are given this blue card. It was this card that allowed me to be transported to the digital world where I met Doraemon. I became his partner and here we are. Naruto finished and took a bow. Takato, Henry, Rika, Renamon, Gilman and Terrierman looked in shock at the life Naruto had lived. Dude, your life that sound is so sad, but cool at the same time since you were a ninja Takato said. Don't worry about it guys, besides this is my future now, to be a Digimon tamer Naruto said with a foxy grin. TFFT, Whiskers you may be a ninja, but your Digimon is weak so let's fight Rika said pointing at Naruto. 
Naruto frowned. Rika, why do you fight so much? Naruto asked. Rika looked at Naruto with a confused look. Why? Because I want Renamon to become stronger and digivolve, and the only way to do that is to defeat any and all strong Digimon and make her fight Abd absorb their data Rika said. Naruto looked at Renamon. Do you feel this way too? Naruto asked the fox Digimon. Renamon's blue eyes looked at Naruto's own as she thought. Hi, Rika is my partner and she is strong and she will help me achieve my goal to digivolve Renamon said. Naruto nodded and then looked as Doraemon walked up next to him. Rika once, you had asked me why Doraemon hasn't digivolved Naruto said. The reason is that although Doraemon is strong, very strong actually, is just that we haven't been in a situation where the bond between Digimon and Tamer are used to amplify the energy that will make Doraemon digivolve Naruto said. What are you saying Whiskers? Please don't say this is another one of your psychobabble stuff Rika said with an annoyed tone. Naruto and Doraemon looked at each other before smiling at each other. Naruto was about to answer when he noticed the large flash of blue light on his left. Well, that's all the time I have Naruto said as he looked to his left and saw a digital field form. Rika, you might want to get that. Rika looked to see the digital field form. The three tamers then ran off with their Digimon in the direction of the field while Naruto and Doraemon watched them run. However, Doraemon noticed Naruto's gaze seemed to focus mostly on the fiery-headed tomboy. So then Whiskers is it now? Doraemon asked with a sly smirk. Naruto blushed lightly. It's nothing like that, we're not even friends yet. So far she seems to see me as Ani annoying and she acts like Sasuke Naruto said. Shuri it's not and if she's anything like Sasuke, you'll break through her steely exterior and befriend her Doraemon said and then walked off with his hands behind his head. It's not like that. Aha, uh -huh, Doraemon said. It is not. Why won't you believe me? Naruto yelled and the two walked off in the direction of the digital field. Digital field. Renamon and Rika had arrived at the digital field first since Renamon had picked up Rika and using her speed to arrive there first. Renamon rested Rika down on the ground and the two looked in front of them to see the blue and black portal before a large Digimon appeared. The Digimon looked a lot like an Allosaurus that was blue with red stripes and a feather hat like what the leader of Indian tribes would wear and had yellow fur-like rings around his wrists. Rika took out her D-Arc and looked at the Digimon. Okay let's see what we got. Alamon, champion level awesome. He is Tiranaman's rival and runs really fast with his powerful leg muscles. His attacks are Dino Burst, Dino Flash and Dynamite Head Rika Reed. Well, well if it isn't a little Renamon and her tamer, I'll destroy you both Alamon said. Let's go big boy Renamon said before jumping upwards. Alamon ran and met her in the air and charged forward with his head. Dynamite Head. Alamon roared and rushed Renamon who was still in the air. Renamon smirked and then flipped to land on Alamon's back before the dinosaur Digimon landed on the ground. Renamon then ran along Alamon's back before dropping in front of his face. Diamond Storm. The fox Digimon yelled as she crossed her arms in front of her chest. Light particles in the shape of diamond shards and just as hard, rocketed from a ring of light and struck Alamon. But they seemed to have no effect due to Alamon just standing there and taking the attack like it was nothing. Hee <laughs> hee. That tickled weakling Alamon said as Renamon landed on the ground. Alamon then raised his head and a ball of red flame formed. Dino burst. The Dino Digimon yelled. However as he was about to fire the attack there were three yells. Pyrosphere. Terrier Tornado. Metal Shoot. A red sphere of flame. A green tornado and multiple balls of metal flew at Alamon and struck the champion Digimon in his jaw. Hurting him as well as knocking his head to the side and his Dino burst was redirected and blasted the ground forming a crater in the ground. Rika looked to the side to see Naruto, Takato and Henry running through the field with their Digimon. Stay out of this Renamon can handle this. Rika yelled and then took out a card from her card case. Digimodify, Snow Agumon's Freezing Wind. Rika yelled as she swiped the card. Renamon jumped in the air and a swirl of blue mist formed around her paw. You need to cool down Dino Breath, Freezing Wind. Renamon yelled and a large burst of ice and wind flew from the mist around Renamon's hand. Alamon turned and opened his mouth and fired another Dino Burst. Flame and ice met in the, the air and the elements struggled for dominance. However, the flame began to overpower Renamon's ice and then struck the fox Digimon. Renamon screamed in pain as the Dino Burst attack burnt her and sent her to the ground. Naruto whipped out a card as Alamon was about to stomp on Renamon. Digimodify, speed activate. Naruto yelled and then swiped the card through his D-Arc. Doraemon ran forward at a goddamn fast speed and grabbed Renamon and brought her out of the way as Alamon's foot crashed down onto where her body once was. Renamon glared at Doraemon as he rested her down. What no thank you for saving your life ungrateful rookie Doraemon mumbled. Renamon ignored the dragon Digimon and went back to fight. Stop interfering. Rika yelled as she whipped out another card. 
Digimodify, data chip activate. Renamon then triggered her freezing wind attack again and the data chip modification caused it to power up and the attack struck Alamon head on. New, I've always hated the Ice Age Alamon roared before becoming completely frozen in ice. Renamon then coated her hand with blue flame. Tower paw. She yelled and then fist crashed down on Alamon and destroyed him as he became data. Renamon quickly absorbed the data and floated in the air as she did so before floating to the ground. Renamon and Rika then walked out of the digital field and left to go home. However, before she left she turned back to face the trio of males and their Digimon. Listen here you guys, if you dare try to help again, I'll make sure you won't be able to tame your Digimon ever again Rika said with a tone as cold as the Arctic. Takato and Henry looked scared, but Naruto glared back at her, blue eyes met purple. Now I definitely know why Renamon won't Digivolve Naruto said. It's because you are too cold and you push everyone away. You need to let Renamon in and show the caring that you Digimon shows towards you Rika narrowed her eyes at Naruto before leaving with Renamon. R.I.K.A. Naruto yelled at her in anger since she didn't listen to him. Naruto and Doraemon looked at each other before looking back at Rika as she walked away. Damn, she needs a chill pill Takato said. Any colder and she'll be a popsicle Henry said. I think that classifies as rude Terrierman said. I want bread. Gilman yelled. Everyone turned to Gilman who just gave a toothy grin. Oh Gilman, you clueless fool Doraemon thought as he face palmed. Takato and Gilman went back to the park so as to put the dinosaur virus type back in his new hiding place while Henry and Terrierman went back home. Naruto and Doraemon watched as the other left. So, you gonna go after her, lover boy? Doraemon asked. Shut up please Naruto said and the two walked back to the apartment complex where they lived. Awa, come on Naruto, it was just a joke. You prince charming you he added for kicks. A vein in Naruto's head bulged and Naruto looked at his Digimon partner. The purple-furred dragon sweat dropped and backed away from his tamer in a nervous manner. Now, now lover boy no need to get on like this Doraemon said. Doraemon, I will kill you Naruto growled, his eyes now a crimson color due to his anger. Momentai Doraemon uttered trying out Terrierman's excuse, but Naruto's expression did not change. Doraemon chuckled nervously before breaking into a run as Naruto chased the dragon all the way back to the apartment. Get back here so I can kick your digital ass. Naruto roared. I'd rather not. Doraemon replied with a hint of panic in his voice. Come on, stop running and take it like a mon. Never. The two had made back to the apartment and Doraemon stood there at the door and began trying to turn the knob. But that was when he remembered something. He heard the jingling of a keychain and gulped as he saw Naruto standing there with the key to the apartment. Oh Doraemon, I have the key Naruto said before chuckling evilly. Naruto then grabbed his Digimon and slapped the ex-antibody holder silly. Finally, when Naruto stopped Doraemon's cheeks were glowing red from pain. Itai, itai, itai Doraemon grumbled before Naruto opened the door. The two partners stepped inside and Naruto took off his shoes and rested them near the door before walking around the room. Naruto decided to look inside the bag of clothes his clone had gotten him. Naruto looked in it and sweat dropped before pulling out the same set of clothes he was wearing now. Six of them plus the one he owned now would make him be wearing the same outfit for the week. Naruto shrugged. Hey, I would have done it too, since I like this outfit Naruto said to himself. Doraemon went into the bedroom and laid down on the bed to sleep on his top bunk. Naruto changed into his pajamas and went to bed also. Naruto was about to close his eyes when. Okay, Naruto remember you have school tomorrow Doraemon said. Naruto's eyes shot wide open as he remembered this piece of information. Shit, Naruto yelled. The next day. It was Monday and Naruto's first day of school at Shinjuku Junior High A, and I meant to say this, but I didn't want to change anything cause I was lazy. This way people can stop telling me how that since Takato. Henry and Naruto are young and have to be in middle school. Naruto had his backpack on his back and walked through the gates before making his way to classroom 5S just as the bell rung. He climbed up two floors and stood outside the door to wait. Okay class, we have a new student joining us today Naruto heard the teacher say. The teacher walked towards the door and opened it and smiled as she saw the blonde boy. Ah oh, there you are, you can come in now the teacher said. Naruto's teacher was male, with brown hair that was reddish brown in color and had brown eyes that were shown through squared lens glasses. The man wore a brown suit with a gray tie and brown shoes. On his shirt was a name tag that said, Mr. Kazuma. Arigato, Mr. Kazuma Naruto said as he walked into the classroom. The class looked at the Digimon Tamer and observed him. Before Naruto spoke, he noticed the class whispering in on themselves and used his advanced hearing to listen to them. Hey he looks weird one kid said. How does his hair do that? It is defying gravity. 
He looks cute. Are those whisker marks on his cheeks real? Naruto chuckled inwardly. So Kyuubai, what should I do? Naruto asked his tenant. Well Kit, we could try and take the normal approach since these are normal people. I'm like you. Hey, I am normal in a non-ninja sort of way Naruto shot back. Excuse me, namikaze Sam. Mr. Kazuma said. Naruto shook his head as he had spaced out when talking to Kyuubai. Hi, Mr. Kazuma. Would you mind introducing yourself to the class? Oh right, Naruto said with a chuckle, earning a bit of laughs from the rest of the classroom. Oh hey, Omina san I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. I am 13 years old and I like ramen, Digimon and my friends. I dislike people who try to hurt or disrespect my friends as well as the three minutes it takes for ramen to cook. I know some martial arts and I can use weapons pretty well too, like Kunai and Shuriken the class immediately perked up at that part. And I hope you guys can help me feel welcome in this time here at school Naruto finished with a bow. Mr. Kazuma nodded before having Naruto sit in a seat by the window. Naruto took out his books as his teacher began teaching mathematics. Naruto looked out the window as he was learning about the use of integration and finding the area under a curve between two points as the curve is bound by the x-axis and y-axis. The blonde sighed before he felt a tap on his shoulder. Naruto turned to see a red-haired girl with gray-colored eyes. Rika, Naruto thought. But that thought was crushed as the girl's face looked nothing like hers. Hi, I'm Kitsumi, so is that really true? She whispered to him. Naruto looked confused as other students began talking to him during the teacher's teaching. That you can throw kanai and shuriken. My brother can do it. But he stopped after he nearly bled to death from cutting his wrist a black-haired boy said. By the way I'm Kiyoshi. Well, yes it is true Naruto said with a smirk. Plus I could kill without dropping a hat. But who cares? Naruto added in his thoughts. Well in our original universe everybody would care. And if people knew here they would freak out and call you killer, murderer or you are awesome Kyuubai said. Hirasai, Baka Kitsu Naruto thought as he continued smiling at his newfound friends. The bell then rang and Naruto walked outside as it was break time. He quickly looked around for Henry and Takato and spotted them underneath the tree by the football field Naruto walked over to them and waved. Oh hey Naruto, how was your first day of school? Henry asked. Other than the fact that you don't learn to kill people here. Pretty good. But math is so boring Naruto deadpanned. Takato and Henry laughed at this before the three stared at each other. Hum, something doesn't seem right Naruto said. What do you mean? Takato asked. Is it the smell of the cafeteria food? Takato asked, No, but thanks for telling me, I've been wondering what that smell was. Is it as bad as it smells? Naruto asked. Takato and Henry looked at each other and then back at Naruto. Yes they replied. Naruto's sweat dropped. I'm gonna go home feeling like I'm dying. Again considering I've nearly died on other occasions the blonde Digimon tamer thought. So what did you think was wrong? Henry asked. Naruto blinked. Oh yeah, I smelled something, but it wasn't the cafeteria food. It smelt like a Digimon was hanging outside my classroom window Naruto said and then he sniffed the air again and his eyes narrowed. And I know who it is he added with a growl. Wait here he told his two friends. As soon as the two heard that Naruto knew this Digimon they could only think one thing. Four Doraemon. Naruto walked over to the bushes that were near the side of the building where he was looking through. He silently made his way over to the bushes and then pulled them apart. Aha! Uh -huh. Naruto yelled pulling the bushes apart. However the Digimon he saw wasn't the one he was hoping to find. That's not Doraemon Naruto said as he looked at the light of Digivolution. Kaluman, what are you doing here? Naruto asked the tiny rabbit looking Digimon. Kaluman looked at Naruto and smiled before jumping on his face. Hi there, human you looked funny when we were playing tag. How did you jump so high? Can all humans jump that high or are you part rabbit or something? Can your hair defy gravity? What is the meaning of life? Kaluman asked rapidly. Naruto gasped for air as he pried the cute little Digimon off of him. What? Oh no, no I am not part rabbit. I don't if my hair defies gravity why does everyone ask that? You know I do not know the meaning of life Naruto said. Kaluman giggled at Naruto when he answered. Humans are silly. You are all so silly Kaluman said smiling at Naruto. The whiskered blonde looked at the tiny Digimon and smirked. Come on Kaluman, I'll introduce you to my friends Naruto said as he placed Kaluman on his head. Yay, more human friends like Naruto Kaluman cheered. Wow, Naruto's taking a while, he must really be scolding Doraemon Takato said. Yeah, or maybe he cut school Henry said. The two shared a laugh before Naruto appeared in between them. Wow how did you get here? The two boys cried out in surprise. You know it's this magical thing called walking Naruto said in a sarcastic tone. Yeah he walked Kaluman said. Humans are so weird Henry and Takato blinked as they looked at the white, rabbit looking Digimon on Naruto's head. Uh, Naruto, who is your little friend here? Henry asked. Yeah, he's kinda cute too Takato added. 
You mean cool oh what the hell? Yeah he's a cute little Digimon isn't he? Henry said, throwing away his last sentence. Naruto and Kaluman chuckled. Takato, Henry this is Kaluman. That's me Kaluman said pointing his fingerless hand at himself and expanding his ears. Nice to meet you. Which one of you Takato and Henry? Kaluman asked. Naruto then identified Takato as the blue sweater and goggle wearing knucklehead while Henry was the tanned Asian boy with an extreme need for mannerisms. No offense guys Naruto said. None taken they said. But secretly in their minds they hated the descriptions Naruto gave them. So who is Kaluman's tamer? Henry asked. Naruto's eyes froze in their sockets before glancing around the football field. Huso, I forgot. But I shouldn't tell them about Kaluman's true form and why he is here in the human world Naruto thought as he tried to come up with an excuse and decided to just go with the flow. No, nah, he has no tamer Naruto said truthfully. Really? Well maybe we could find one for him Takato said. And I have the perfect candidate in mind. Follow me Takato led the two humans and one Digimon to the small stegosaurus looking hideout that was in the playground area. There stood a boy with brown spiky hair with a purple visor. He wore a black t-shirt and gray pants and was playing the Digimon card game with another boy who wore a red t-shirt under a tan-colored jacket with black pants. The ones playing cards are my friends Kento and Kazu. Kazu was the one I was talking about to be Kaluman's partner Tekado said. Naruto looked as Kazu played the power modification card and won the game against Kenta. It was that particular move that caused Naruto's mind to not choose Kazu. I wouldn't recommend him. He constantly focuses on upgrading the power of his Digimon, and thus causes them to leave themselves wide open Naruto said. That is a fighting style I learned to discharge the hard way Takato chuckled nervously. Yeah, I guess you're right Takato said as he imagined Kaluman and Gilman having a boxing match. Kazu used the power modification card and then Kaluman jumped to hit Gilman. But Gilman got under the little white Digimon's guard and knocked out Kaluman with a single punch. You don't guess I'm right, you know I'm right, Takato Naruto said with a smile. The bell then rang for the students to go back to class. Naruto looked at Kaluman and Kaluman looked down at him. Well Kaluman, I have to go back to class now Naruto said. Kaluman, who was just happy and his ears expanded, became sad and his ears became small again by shrinking. Oh, does that mean you're not gonna play with me anymore, Naruto? Kaluman asked. No, not at all, it just means we're gonna take a... A Naruto snapped his fingers as he thought up the right word. A timeout, we're taking a timeout, because I'm tired and I need to go back to class so when class is over I'll come and get you. Okay, Naruto explained. Kaluman immediately brightened up at those words. Yay, yay, more playing with Naruto, gogglehead and manners boy. Hore, Kaluman yelled. Henry and Takato sweat dropped at their nicknames before turning to Naruto and glaring at him. This is your fault they told him. Naruto sweat dropped himself before holding up his hands in a weak defense. Doman Nasai, Kaluman, listen their names are Takato and Henry okay. Naruto said. Kaluman nodded. Henry and Takato and Naruto. Kaluman yelled saying Naruto's name happily. Naruto chuckled and rested Kaluman on the tree branch after lightly jumping since the branch was actually quite low. I'll come pick you up late, so stay here Naruto said. Kaluman nodded and the three tamers went back to their classrooms. School's over. Naruto, Takato and Henry immediately ran out of their classrooms and headed for the tree, and smiled when they saw Kaluman sleeping on the tree branch. Naruto picked up the little Digimon who immediately woke up. It was then that someone else chose to come out. Narutuo, the voice of a certain purple-furred dragon Digimon yelled. Everyone turned to see Doraemon running towards Naruto really fast and then slammed into Naruto's body and Naruto felt as if he was hit with a solid metal bar. Ooh, Kami-sama that hurt? Doraemon please tell me you didn't use dash metal while running to me Naruto said in pain. Doraemon smiled as he got up. Okay, I'll tell you I used hyper dash metal instead Doraemon said with a smirk. Naruto growled before putting his partner in a headlock and giving him a noogie. Unknown to them a golden fox Digimon was watching from a nearby tree. What is it about their relationship? Naruto and Doraemon, why is it that I feel like mine and Rika's relationship should be this way? Why do I feel jealous? Renamon thought. Renamon then received a mental call from Rika. Renamon sighed before using her speed and seemed to phase out of existence as she headed towards her tamer. Who is this Digimon? Kaluman asked looking at Doraemon and then looking at the red triangle on his head. Ooh, shiny Kaluman said before jumping on Doraemon's head and staring at his reflection in the crimson gem that was embedded in Doraemon's skull. Hahaha, ha, ha. Kaluman remember this is Doraemon. He was the Digimon who caught you during our little game of tag yesterday Naruto informed Kaluman. Oh yeah, Doraemon, Doraemon yay. Kaluman said and then expanded his ears to show his happiness. Terriermon then came out of Henry's backpack where he always hid. Hey who is this little guy? 
Terrierman asked. Terrierman, you're one to say little, Kaluman's almost as tall as you Takato said. Keyword, Takato, almost so moment I if you please Terrierman said. Terrierman, telling people off is rude. Now Kaluman, let's go to the park so you can meet my Digimon partner Gilman Takato told the white little Digimon. Kaluman giggled in excitement before the group ran off towards the park. Naruto then grabbed Kaluman and put him on his head. I'll meet you guys there. Okay Kaluman hang on tight Naruto instructed. Kaluman laughed and clutched Naruto's blonde locks as Naruto ran off full speed using his highly trained leg muscles from his ninja training. Whhhia. Kaluman screamed. Shinjuku Park Gilman's place. Look how happy they look Naruto thought with a smile as he watched Doraman and Gilman lean against opposite walls and toss Kaluman to each other using their tails. This is nice, look how much fun they're having Takato said. Yeah, it would really ruin the moment if a Digimon appeared now Henry said. Hypnos HQ. Sir there is another wild one approaching Riley said to Yamaki. Yamaki watched the screen and the red dot that represented the Digimon being followed by a tracer that he had already commanded Riley and her partner in the opposite chair to send. However, the tracer was destroyed before it reached its designated target. Sir, the tracer dot it has been. Destroyed Riley informed him in shock. Yamaki growled as he heard Riley's next words. It's bio emerging. Back with the gang. As they were all playing, the Digimon suddenly stopped and then Gilman's eyes dilated. Terrierman's nose started twitching and Doraman's pupils changed from rounded into vertical slits. Hey guys, what's wrong? Takato asked. Gilman didn't respond, but simply growled in response. A Digimon Terrierman said. The Tamer's eyes widened in shock and then took off, completely forgetting about Kaluman. It's coming from the baseball field near my parents' apartment Henry said as he observed the area of the digital field that formed. Kaluman giggled and flew after the group. Yay, another game. Baseball field. Naruto and the others arrived at the digital field with their partners and walked through the digital field. Takato and Henry has put on their glasses and goggles as they walked through the fog of the digital field before taking them off. Why do you guys put on those things if you only take them off, like one second later? Doruman asked. Takato and Henry looked at each other and shrugged. Because it's cool, Takato replied. The group shrugged before turning to their front as they heard an evil laugh and then multiple shadows floated through the mist. A sharp object flew through the air, but Naruto quickly whipped out a kunai knife and threw at the projectile and both weapons clattered to the ground. Naruto walked up to the place where his knife landed and pocketed it in his weapon's pouch. Come out, I know you're there Naruto called out. A buzzing sound was heard as 12B looking Digimon appeared. They looked like a crossbreed between bees, ants and flies, with the crimson color of ants, the body structure of a fly and the stinger of a bee. It wore a silver helmet-like armor on its head through which blue eyes looked through. The digicrest of knowledge was shown on the helmet. Henry took out his D-Arc and looked as a holographic image of the insect Digimon appeared. Flybeamon, an armor digivolution Digimon and champion level. It tends to travel in swarms and attack with their lightning sting and poison stinger attacks Henry Reed. Naruto and Doraemon stepped forwards. You ready you too? Naruto asked as he got into a fighting stance. Takato and Henry nodded. We're ready Takato said with determination. Naruto nodded. Then let's go wild Naruto and the Digimon charged forwards. The fly beam and scattered and then got into an attack formation. Lightning sting. The insect Digimon yelled and then a dozen yellow bolts of lightning flew from the fly beam and stingers. Gilman and Terrierman were struck and sent to the ground. But Doruman and Naruto jumped over the attacks. Metal shoot. Doruman roared and then three spheres of steel shot out from the X antibody holder's open maw and struck down three of the Digimon but only immobilized them for a few seconds as they got back up. Naruto ran forwards and avoided the lightning sting attack from one before he grabbed the stinger and then formed a racing gun in his hand. I thought you couldn't do that unless you used a cage bench and Doraman said. I lied Naruto said as he slammed the racing gun into the stomach of the fly beamon. The Digimon turned into data before Naruto spun on his heel and then took out two kunai and threw them at two incoming fly beamon and impaled them in their eyes and turned them into data as he recovered the kunai. Poison Stinger. One fly beamon yelled and then tried to impale the purple dragon Digimon. But Naruto's Digimon partner smirked before dodging the attack before grabbing it and throwing it towards Gilman. Gilman, now. Doraman commanded. Gilman nodded and looked at Takato who nodded also. Digimodify, power activate. The goggle-wearing preteen yelled as he swiped the modification card through his D-Arc. Gilman's power was then increased. Pyrosphere. Gilman yelled and then fired out multiple crimson spheres from his mouth and struck several flybeamen as well as the one Doraman threw to him turning them into crimson data that all three Digimon absorbed. 
Terrier Tornado. Terrierman yelled and then spun rapidly forming a green twister. The twister then grew bigger as Terrierman spun faster and faster before stopping when all the fly beamen were gathered into the tornado. The tornado dispersed and all the fly beamen spun in the air, dizzy. Okay Doroman, time to finish them Naruto said. Doroman nodded and then Tamer and Digimon jumped into the air. Doroman opened his mouth. Metal shoot. Doroman yelled and then at least seven spheres of metal flew towards the nauseated fly beamen. Naruto then formed hand signs and took a deep breath. Katan, Gaokaku no Jutsu, Fire Style, Grand Fireball Jutsu. Naruto yelled and then a ball of orange and red flame flew from Naruto's mouth and set the metal spheres on fire. Collaboration Jutsu, Gaokaku de Bakufu no Jutsu, Collaboration Jutsu, Fireball Explosion Jutsu. Naruto yelled and then the metal balls that were set on fire exploded upon contact with the fly beamen and caused a large explosion of fire and smoke. Naruto and Doraemon gave each other high fives while Henry and Takato along with their Digimon and Kaluman who had tagged along watched in awe. Naruto blew fire from his mouth Kaluman said as he giggled in glee. Dude, that was so freaking awesome. Takato said, you can make a pyrosphere like me. Gilman asked, no Gilman, it's similar to pyrosphere, but much bigger and powerful Naruto said. So is my attack weak then? Gilman asked with his ears dropping in sadness at thinking his friend was calling him weak. Naruto frowned and tapped Gilman on the head. Of course not Naruto was about to say more when another voice appeared through the fading digital field. Of course it is a female voice said. Naruto looked up from Gilman as everyone turned to see the fiery-haired tomboy. Rika, everyone exclaimed in shock. Why are you here? Tekado asked. Rika walked towards the area where the fly beamen were and saw that they were not data yet, and were still phasing in and out, meaning they were almost dead. Renamon, finish them off and upload their data Rika said in a monotone. Naruto glared at Rika as she watched Renamon use her diamond storm attack and absorb the down Digimon's data. That was cruel Rika Takato said, attacking them while they were down. Digimon have feelings too you know. Listen and listen good goggle head, especially you whiskers. Digimon are just physical embodiments of data and therefore have no blood or emotions. They are just data, data, data. Rika said to the three tamers and their Digimon. Then Naruto clenched his fists in anger. He wanted nothing more than to walk over there and slap Rika in the face hard. But it was against his principles to attack someone unless he was attacked first or if they were recognized as a threat and Rika was neither attacking him nor was she a threat to him or his Digimon. Renamon let's go Rika said. Renamon walked over to Rika and nodded before picking up her tamer into her arms and then using her superior speed, blurred away towards Rika's house. Takato and Henry looked between themselves and the Digimon. She is like an ice queen or something Henry said. She would classify as rude in my book Terrierman said. The two tamers then left for home. Of course Takato had to go to the park first to drop off Gilman before going home. Naruto and Doruman and Kaluman were the only ones remaining after that. You're going to go and try and talk to her aren't you? Doruman asked. Naruto looked at his partner and then picked up Kaluman before resting the light of Digivolution on his head. Hi, and if I can't talk sense into her head that Digimon are real, and have emotions and a soul we're going to have to get physical with them Naruto said. Let's get physical, let's get physical Doraemon sang the song, physical. Naruto and Kaluman chuckled before the three got ready to run. Digimodify, hyperspeed activate. Naruto yelled as he slashed the card along the slit in his D-arc. Okay, let's go, Naruto said. Kaluman was giddy and laughing as Naruto and Doraemon ran off at super fast speeds, causing Kaluman to once again to have to cling to Naruto's blonde locks to remain on his head. Rika's house. Rika walked into her large, traditional Japanese-styled house. Rika walked through the front door and took off her shoes before walking past the living room where her grandmother, Seiko Hata, was watching the television with Rika's mother, Makino Nanako. As they saw Rika walking past the two elder females watched her. Rika Nanako where have you been? Makino asked. Rika sighed and faced the fashion model that was her mother. I went for a walk. Aka-chan. That's all Rika replied in a bored tone. A walk? Well that was some walk. You've been gone for an hour Makino said. Oh don't be so hard on the girl Makino. I remember when you, yourself went out late to do things Rika's grandmother said. However as the three were about to converse more there was a knock on the door. I'll get it Makino said as she got up from the couch and walked towards the sliding door. Nakan halted as she heard whispers outside before the rustling of bushes and something that sounded like, Stay in Kami forsaken bush until I come back. 
The door opened to reveal a blonde spiky-haired boy with sapphire eyes and three whisker marks on both his cheeks. The boy wore a black t-shirt with orange flames on the sleeves and bottom of the t-shirt which bore an orange-scaled dragon on the front of the t-shirt. Black cargo pants with many pockets, a pouch of some sort, a digital device and card holder like Rika's except in reddish-violet and finally a pair of orange and blue sneakers completed the outfit. Oh, Kobanwa, young man Makino said with a polite smile. Who are you now? The young woman asked. I'm a friend of Rika's Naruto lied. More like sworn enemy or something he thought. Makino's eyes brightened at that piece of information. Well you're certainly a handsome young man please come in, Akachan. Please make some tea for this friend of Rika's Makino said. Rika has friends, Seiko said in surprise. Rika looked at her grandmother. She didn't think I had friends, but who is this dot 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 at this hour too? She thought and then gasped at who she saw. Whiskers, what the hell are you doing here? She asked. Makino looked at her daughter and frowned. Now, now Rika, this boy said he was your friend, is he? She asked. No. Then that means yes Makino said with a smile. Naruto chuckled. May I come in, Mrs. Nanaka? He asked. Of course I'm um, what is your name? My name Naruto. Naruto Yuzumaki Namikaze Naruto replied. Uo, such a nice name. It sounds like the name of a hero or something Makino said and then led both children to the kitchen where they sat at the small table and drank some tea. Wonderful tea, Seiko-san Naruto said as he sipped some more of the hot beverage. Seiko blushed lightly at the compliment. Oh please, no need to be so complimentary, Naruto the elderly woman said. That was when Makino decided to ask the question she had been dying to ask. Are you Rika's boyfriend? Naruto's eyes widened as well as Rika's and Naruto suddenly began choking on his tea and dropped the cup on his lap singing his balls. Nani yai, ahothotho thought. Naruto bellowed as he began jumping around in pain while also coughing from choking. Meanwhile, Doruman, Kaluman and Renamon who were all sitting in a tree observing the scene were laughing. Well Renamon was surprisingly releasing a chuckle, but the other were laughing like no tomorrow. Kyuubai on the other hand, well let's just say his spleen died like 10 times before he stopped laughing as he rolled about in the cage. In the end, Naruto had an ice bag on his balls and was still trying to clear the tea out of his epiglottis. Oh Goman Nasai, I shouldn't have asked that Makino said. Are you alright? She asked. Naruto grunted a bit in pain and readjusted the ice pack. Just, Naruto paused to adjust the ice pack mumbling things about crazy mothers. Dandy he finished his sentence. You're right, you should not have asked that question Rika said and she couldn't leave because when she tried to her mother moved at speeds that even Rika herself didn't know she could move it and had her sit right back down next to Naruto. Aka-chan when can the whiskers kid leave? She asked. Naruto straightened his back to show that he was taller than Rika by at least two inches and glanced downwards at her. Kid, Rika I'm 13 and you're like what 11? Naruto said. I'm 12 just so you know Rika said with a huff. Oh one more year big difference Kyuubai said sarcastically to Naruto from within the mindscape. Naruto mentally laughed at that. So really how long have you known Rika? Seiko asked. About two days he honestly answered. Really, are you new to Shinjuku or something then Naruto? Makino asked. Naruto nodded and sipped his refilled teacup. Hi, I live with my uncle in an apartment near Shinjuku Junior High Naruto said. The two elder women nodded before turning to Rika. Makino then got up and gripped Rika's arm and pulled her out of the room and closed the door to the kitchen so that Naruto and Seiko wouldn't hear. Rika, tell me the truth are you dating this surprisingly handsome young blonde Makino said to her daughter in complete seriousness. Rika glared at her mother and blushed slightly. No, she yelled. Nanny, but he looks like such a catch to me for a girl your age. He seems to be physically fit, mentally stable and best of all he can take your emotionlessness and not get pissed off what's not to like. Makino asked, the fact that he is a stupid Whiskers. Whiskers is his name now, Awa oh, that's cute you have a nickname for him. Giarara Rika's purple eyes glared at her mother. However, within the kitchen during the heated conversation between mother and daughter, Seiko and Naruto were talking. So, but really are you dating Rika? Seiko asked. Honestly Seiko-san, no, but if I want to which I have no intention of doing Naruto said, yet he thought, I would have to break through her shell of emotionlessness. I once had a friend whose personality was exactly like Rika's. The thing was that his parents were killed Naruto said, Seiko gasped. How awful, the poor boy must have been traumatized Seiko said. Naruto nodded. He was and he became so caught up in negative emotions he built a wall a second skin that I would call his Imonus. Naruto joked causing Seiko and he to chuckle, but the only thing he wanted was someone to understand the pain he was going through dot 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 he was looking for someone like me Naruto added. Nanny, but you said you lived with an uncle. Seiko said, I lied to you because I knew you all would take pity on me and try to take me into your home. 
I have a great deal of psychological knowledge and I can tell you and your daughter, daughter-in-law are that way. I am an orphan. My parents died when I was just a baby and I was taken into an orphanage. Naruto said. Seiko nodded and realized that this was just what Rika was looking for. Someone who has lived through an immense amount of pain and anger and still has the courage to smile and appreciate the things in life. Well, I support your attempt to befriend my granddaughter. She needs someone like you Naruto. Please promise me you will look after her like that Kitsune that always watches over her Seiko said. Naruto's eyes widened. You know, he hissed. Of course and I wouldn't doubt you know also of her guardian fox. I was once Rika's age and at that age I was very observant of my surroundings since I had taken up the martial arts during those days. I'm still observant and although my fighting skills have dulled dot 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 my eyesight has not Seiko said. I will. I will do my best Seiko-san. I will do what I can to protect Rika Naruto said. I never go back on my word a serious look in his eyes. Seiko saw the look his sapphire orbs gave off and it was one that you could just look at Naruto and know you can trust him to do what you want him to and the elderly woman nodded in thanks. Arigato, Naruto she thanked mentally. The door then opened and Makino and Rika walked back into the room. However, as Rika was about to sit down her D-Arc had gone off along with Naruto's. A Digimon was present in the area in the compound of Rika's home but it was somewhere outside as identified by the signal compass on the D-Arc. Rika and Naruto quickly got up and left, but Naruto stopped and turned to bow. Arigato for the tea, Seiko-san, Makino-san. Rika, wait up Naruto called as he put on his shoes and chased after Rika who was already out the door. Ought to be in love Makino said. Seiko chuckled before looking up at the moon through the open door that led to the walkway that led all the way around the house. Please keep her safe Seiko thought. I will keep my promise to keep Rika safe. That is my Nindo. I never go back on my word Naruto thought. He then saw movement in the trees as Rika raced around to the back of her house. Dorum and Naruto mentally called out. During their time to train in Naruto's mind they had already developed the mental link to know when the other is in danger. I'm here Naruto Dorum and called out from above before dropping down from the trees with Kaluman still on his head. Come on we gotta follow Rika. She found a Digimon in her backyard Naruto said and then the three rounded the corner and saw a large amount of trees that made up Rika's backyard. Some backyard? This is a training ground Doraman said. The three entered the forest and came to a clearing that was surrounded by webs and then hid behind some trees and saw Rika and Renamon looking around the area. Naruto took out his D-Arc so he could get a piece of information of the Digimon Rika was going to fight. Then they saw it, a large arachnid-looking Digimon. The spider had three long legs on each side, the first ones being wrapped in three belts. The second ones were wrapped in purple bandages and had three stripes of yellow while the third ones had were plain black and yellow and finally the fourth ones were gripping long locks of red hair that were attached to a mane of crimson hair which was behind a mask of gold with multiple green eyes. The large bulbous backside of the spider Digimon was patterned with a large skull and crossbones with a large red stinger pointing out. The mouth of the Digimon was filled with sharp teeth and red claws came from the tips of the spider's legs. Okay let's see what we got here Rika said reading the information from her D-Arc. Dokagumon, champion level Digimon. A Digimon said to be born from accumulation of viruses and attacks with her poison thread and poison cobweb attacks. Well Rika, let's squash this bug Renamon said. Of course, and finally we're going to make you Digivolve after you absorb its data Rika said. Dokagumon walked along the threads of the webbing she had created and laughed evilly at the fox Digimon and her tamer. Oh goody, I've been craving some fox for dinner. Maybe I'll have the human for an appetizer Dokagumon said with a creepy laugh. Naruto, Kaluman and Doraman watched as Renamon began to fight. Renamon jumped into the air and crossed her arms in front of her and then a white circle of light formed. Diamond Storm Renamon cried out as she spread out her arms and then diamond shards of light formed before rocketing off and striking Dokagumon. The spider Digimon cackled like witch on Halloween before glaring at Renamon. Let me show you a real attack Dokagumon said, poison cobweb. A purple string of web flew from the virus spider's abdomen and tried to hit Renamon but missed. Tower paw. Renamon yelled and then her hand like paws became surrounded by ghostly blue flames. Renamon punched the spider Digimon in its face before planting a kick on the head to front flip onto the spider's abdomen and then bringing down both fists of flame onto the spider's back before landing in front of Rika again. Dokagumon groaned in pain. Ugh, too strong Dokagumon said in a weak voice. Rika and Renamon smirked. No Rika, don't let your guard down. Naruto yelled. Rika and Renamon turned at the sound of Naruto's voice. Huh, whiskers. Dokagumon smirked and then aimed a poison cobweb attack at Rika. I won't let you hurt Rika Renamon said and then pushed Rika out of the way and became ensnared in the purple webbing. 
Dokagumen chuckled as she pulled the fox Digimon back towards the web and prepared to feast. But Rika drew a card. Digimodify, Sneeman's twin sickle. Rika yelled and swiped the card. Renamon's hands then changed from the wrist down to twin sickles like that of a praying mantis except made of actual metal sickles. Naruto, Doruman and Kaluman ran towards Rika as Renamon sliced her way out of the webbing before jumping off of Dokagumon's head. Renamon's sickle hands glowed red before two energy crescents shot from the sickles and impacted with Dokagumon. Rika, are you alright? Naruto asked. Rika turned and glared at the blonde. Go away, Naruto Rika yelled, not even bothering with the nickname due to the situation she was in. Digimodify, speed activate. She yelled and had the D-Arc scan the card to give its abilities to Renamon. Renamon then sped towards Dokagumon and planted a power paw attack to its face, but the spider felt nothing and knocked Renamon away into a tree. Renamon panted as she was struck with a poison thread attack sending her faster into the tree and leaving a Renamon-shaped imprint. Renamon, get up. Rika yelled and saw the spider Digimon about to attack her. Naruto and Doruman were about to help when Renamon got up and faster than the speed of sound which caused Renamon to make a sonic boom from her movement, appeared in front of Rika and took the attack at close range. Renamon screamed in pain before looking at Rika with pained icy blue eyes. Renamon, why did you take the hit for me? Rika asked. Renamon smirked. It's obvious, isn't it? We are partners and partners look out for each other, Renamon said before falling to the ground, her body phasing in and out of existence. Naruto growled as he saw Rika actually shed tears. That's it, Doruman let's go, Naruto said. The two charged forward with a battle cry. Rasengan. Naruto yelled. Metal shoot. Doruman roared. Multiple balls of metal formed in Doruman's maw and struck the champion level Digimon in her face sending her skidding along the web but doing any real damage. Naruto channeled Chakra into his feet so he couldn't stick to the web and the ball of Chakra and wind slammed into the Digimon's face and actually sent pain through the virus type's body. Naruto then jumped back as she tried to hit him with a poison cobweb attack. Poison thread. Dokagumon yelled and then a purple vapor raced towards Naruto who formed a cross-shaped hand sign. Keijbenshin no Jutsu. Naruto yelled and then 20 Keijbenshins formed. Many took the hit from the poison thread attack leaving just enough for Naruto to do his combination attack with Doraemon. Four clones ran along the web and skidded underneath Dokagumon and then kicked the spider in its chin with chakra enhanced kicks sending Dokagumon skyward. Naruto the clones yelled as they kicked the spider Digimon. A clone then gave Naruto and Doraemon a boost before the two charged downwards as Dokagumon went up. Yuzumaki Racing Kane Renden. Naruto Yuzumaki Spiraling Metal Barrage. Naruto and Doraemon yelled as the Digimon shot forth with a heavy metal dash attack while spinning, and Naruto flipped in the air to meet Dokagumon with Doraemon and then planted an axe kick while Doraemon's rotating form slammed into the spider at the same time. Dokagumon yelled in pain and fell back down to her web, and it was because of that that the original force of the attack had no effect since the barrage only got power from when the opponent made contact with the ground or a solid surface. Spider webs were not gonna cut it. Dokagumon chuckled as Naruto and Doraemon were knocked away by her legs and then slammed into a tree before slumping down, groaning in pain. Meanwhile, Rika was still looking at the down Digimon. Don't cry, Rika. I did what I could to protect you, the Golden Fox Digimon said. But, Renamon you can't go I need you, you're my friend please don't go Rika said with tears coming down her face. Renamon smiled as she had actually hit past the hard exterior of Rika Nanaka and reached her original soft spot. I'm glad that you got to meet your emotions for once Rika Renamon said and then closed her eyes. Renamon, no you can't leave me Renamon. Kaluman now, Naruto told the little white Digimon. Kaluman looked at Naruto with a confused look, but it seemed that he didn't need to understand Naruto's command for as Rika shouted Renamon's name. Her D-Arc shone with a white light, and the red, upside-down triangle on Kaluman's head began to glow brightly. Digivolution. Renamon digivolves to Kyuubimon. Renamon's form changed to resemble a large golden and white-furred kitsune with the edges of the white fur that glowed with mystical blue flames on the paws. Instead of one tail, eight more had sprouted out, now nine blonde-colored tails each tipped with white fur that seemed to also glow with mystical blue flames just like her paw fur. The bottom of Kyuubimon's mouth was white and two purple slash marks were shown underneath her still glacial blue eyes and a large white mane extended along the entire length of her neck. The yin-yang symbol was shown above each of her four legs and one lay on the center of her forehead. A white and red rope tied in a bow with two golden bells attached to it was wrapped around her neck. Kyuubimon. Kyuubai said from within Naruto's mind. Kyuubimon Naruto and Doraemon fought in shock. She, she she looks. Naruto tried to find words, but then Kyuubai decided to finish them for him. 
she's gorgeous, the crimson-colored demon Kitsune said. And if Naruto could his bid you, he would we drooling and wolf howling or well fox howling at the supposed hotness of Kyuubiman. Kyuso, I wish I was out there with you right now Kit. What do you think, Mr. and Mrs. Kyuubai, Kyuubiman? Nice isn't it? Kyuubai asked. Naruto sweat dropped at the demon. You're a sad strange little demon you have my pity farewell Naruto said. Pity, I don't want you damn fucking pity, I want to grab Kyuubiman and too late. Naruto thought with a smile as any mental images Kyuubai would have brought from his comments were now gone because he severed the connection, which would then be reconnected after a while. What you digivolved, but how? Rika asked. Kyuubiman growled at Dokuguman and then spread out her nine tails. Small blue fireballs were lit at the end of each tail. Take this, Foxtail Inferno. Kyuubiman yelled and then the ghostly blue flames burnt the entire spider web and also Dokuguman's legs as they began burning her alive. Now to finish you off Dragon Wheel. Kyuubiman howled as she jumped into the air. The nine-tailed fox Digimon spun rapidly in the air and surrounded herself in blue flames before the flame took the form of a giant blue dragon of flame which then roared and burnt Dokuguman alive before turning her into data which Kyuubiman absorbed before floating down to the ground. How, how did you digivolve? Rika asked. I believe Naruto can answer that Kyuubiman said. Rika turned to the blonde who got up from the ground. Whiskers I mean, Naruto, how did Kyuubiman digivolve? Rika asked. Naruto smiled. Because during that time when Renamon was dying you let her in and you unlocked your bottle's feelings and let Renamon know who you really are inside behind the mask of an impassive emo girl was a soft, caring one who only wanted things to be good in her life. Naruto said, Data is only half the puzzle to Digivolution. When a Digimon bonds with a Tamer, the Digimon will use the energy of the Tamer to Digivol, and the bond between a Tamer and their Digimon is what brings out the true strength in a tamed Digimon and thus Digivolution can be achieved Naruto said in a sage-like tone. Rika nodded before walking up to Naruto and looking down at the ground. Well it's um um late and all, and you must be kinda tired so maybe you should spend the night. I mean I'm not saying you should and I'm not saying I would like you to stay the night here. But Naruto chuckled and then put a finger to Rika's lips, telling her to be quiet. Hee <laughs> hee, it's okay Rika. Yeah sure I'll spend the night here because I am tired and it is late. Now then come on Rika-chan it's time for bed and we both have school tomorrow. Naruto said. Rika and Kyuubiman chuckled before looking at each other. It was during that small period of staring that occurred between the females that Doruman gave Naruto a high five. Nice plan Naruto. Spending the night at the girl's house dot 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 you gonna sneak into her room you old dog you Doruman said with a perverted grin. Naruto turned and glared at his Digimon. Kaluman having jumped on top of Naruto's head and fallen asleep didn't hear the swear words that came out of Naruto's mouth, and Rika's ears were covered by Kyuubiman's tails as Naruto yelled at his Digimon partner. The group laughed before they each went to their respective rooms. Rika went in hers where Nara had finally gotten to see Rika with her hair down when they both went to get some water before going to bed. Your hair looks nice when it's not in a ponytail he had said and this had caused Rika to blush at that compliment as she tried to come up with a reply to that since no boy had ever said anything to her in a way Naruto had said it. It's like he has some kind of boyish charm and he doesn't even seem aware of it Rika thought. Naruto chuckled and sported his foxy grin. Don't take it as how you're seeing it in your mind. Just look at it as a friend complimenting a friend well goodnight Rika-chan Naruto said before going into the guest room to sleep with Doraman and Kalaman. Renamon watched from on a nearby tree as Rika went to bed and at the same time Doraman watched Naruto on the extra futon that he was sleeping on with Naruto as Kaluman slept on Naruto's stomach. Things are getting interesting between those two the two Digimon thought with a smile before they went to sleep. Rika woke up with a loud yawn and looked at her clock which was hanging on the wall in her room. It was 7 o'clock giving her a good hour to shower. Get dressed and head out for school with some toast and butter. As she had her shower she thought about the events that occurred last night. Renamon finally managed to digivolve. But what is this feeling that I felt when I saw Renamon dying? But she's just data. I sent she. Rika thought. After having her shower, she changed into her school uniform a gray top which was worn underneath a white t shirt with a gray tie and a gray skirt with black shoes and white socks. She tied her hair back into its normally seen spiky ponytail thing and then walked out to go and have breakfast. As she stepped into the kitchen, she took a deep breath as she smelt her grandma's cooking. Kanashua, Oba-chan Rika greeted her grandmother as she walked in. The elderly woman smiled at her granddaughter as she walked in. Kanashua Rika, your friend Naruto left about a half hour ago, but he left you this note. He said to give it to you as soon as you woke up Seiko Hana said to the young fiery-haired girl. 
Rika took the letter and opened it, but froze when she did before looking at her grandmother. Did you read this, Oba-chan? Rika asked with a slight glare. Seiko chuckled before turning back to do the dishes. What an accusation. How could you accuse me of reading that letter, Rika? Seiko asked. Yeah, you're right, Oba-chan, Rika said as she bit into her slice of buttered toast. Then she looked at the letter and read it. Oh heyo, Rika-chan. Well seeing as I'm leaving this morning since I too have school. Just writing this to say goodbye just in case you and Renamon got mad at seeing Doraman. Kaluman and I leave. Anyways, congratulations on having Renamon digivolving into Kyuubiman. And remember what I told you. Data is only have the puzzle. The strength of the tamer is what allows digivolution to become possible for tamed Digimon. See ya, Naruto, Doraman and Kaluman. P.S. Kaluman says you're always scowly and you should stop ha ha ha. Rika chuckled as she read the last line before realizing what Kaluman just said. Hey, I am not scowly, I'm just dot not in the mood to smile Rika thought to herself. She then went to her room and got her school bag before finishing off her toast and taking off for school. I'm off to school Oba-chan, Yanni Rika said with a wave. Have fun, Rika. Shinjuku Junior High Naruto's class. 9.30 a.m. Naruto was looking out the window. Not paying attention to the class as Mr. Kazuma, his teacher spoke during a lecture during history class. Dear Kami-sama he's as boring as Aruka-sensei. Of all the things to lecture about, it had to be on the history of bread. Who cares about bread? You make it, you bake it, you eat it. That's all bread should be about Naruto thought and then he scanned the playground and noticed Doraman and Kaluman waving to him as they hid in a nearby tree. Naruto smiled and waved back. Naruto Namikaze, Mr. Kazuma yelled. Naruto whipped his head to face his teacher and stood up at lightning speed. Hi, Mr. Kazuma, sir. Naruto asked in surprise causing a few chuckles to erupt from the class. Naruto glared slightly at the laughing children, especially his classmate friends, Kiyoshi and Katsumi. Would you care to explain to the class why you were waving to something outside? Mr. Kazuma asked. Yeah, Naruto. Katsumi asked with a giggle. Going mad already? I knew you were crazy, but not that much. Casper the friendly ghost say hello Kiyoshi said. The class laughed and Naruto glared at Kiyoshi. Say anything again and you'll find yourself dangling from the flagpole outside the school by your underwear Kiyoshi Naruto growled, his eyes flashing red. Kiyoshi gulped and back away as he it wasn't the threat that scared him, but the fact that he knew that Naruto could actually back up the threat and carry it out. Naruto, you have not answered me yet. The teacher roared as Naruto thought he had used the big head no jutsu that Aruka always used when he was talking, and it was never a good sign. Naruto gulped as he tried to come up with an excuse. Then a light bulb went off in his head as an idea struck him like a bolt of lightning. Well you see Mr. Kazuma I was attempting an experiment of the sort. You see if you clap here together you generate an air current that is released from your hands. So I was seeing that if it was possible to create a wind current at the same power and speed with only one hand as the application of Newton's third law is applied as the movement of a body A. My hand, against a body B. The air, if my moving my hand will generate an opposite and equal moving force formed from the wind. Do you understand Mr. Kazuma? Naruto asked. Mr. Kazuma blinked and could not reply. Mr. Kazuma just got served one random student blurted out. Detention for you, Mr. Mr. Kazuma said. The student who was currently laughing stopped and then his smile turned upside down into a frown as he slumped onto his desk causing the people in the class to laugh. Okay, Naruto you can sit Mr. Kazuma said, so was your experiment successful thought, Naruto? The teacher asked. Naruto sweat dropped and chuckled nervously. Though he said, as I thought, now and then back to my lecture, where was I? Oh yes how the bread is made into fluffy shapes, Mr. Kazuma said. However, before Mr. Kazuma could continue the bell rang for break time. Naruto smirked and thanked Kami for the man who invented the school bell. As Naruto went to the playground he spied Doraman and Kaluman waiting in their little hiding tree. Naruto looked around and saw that no one was looking at him, which was good, because as soon as he realized this he performed a jump which only Shinobi like himself could perform and front flipped before landing on the tree branch. His knees bent to absorb the shock from when one would land on a surface. Yay, Naruto jumped like a rabbit again Kaluman said with excitement clapping his fingerless hands. Naruto chuckled and then Kaluman jumped onto his head. So how was class? You seemed bored Doraman said. Naruto sighed. It was, Mr. Kazuma, my teacher told us about the history of bread. Bread? Naruto exclaimed, saying bread again for emphasis. Uo, bread? I like bread Doraman said. Can we go to Takato's place and buy more? The rookie level Digimon asked. Naruto face palmed and sighed. Gilman's not a good influence for you, Doraman Naruto said. Awa, but Gilman's so much fun. He gives me bread too the ex-antibody holder said with a smile. 
Naruto sighed again before spying Takato and Henry talking below them. Naruto smirked as a little classic prank played out in his mind. So Takato, how's Gilman doing? Henry asked. He's fine, but damn he eats so much bread. The entire room where my parents keep leftovers is nearly empty Takato replied with a sigh. Maybe you should give him the cafeteria food Henry suggested. He did, remember on his first day of being a Digimon when I created him and he followed me to school the next day Takato said. Oh yeah, he was looking at clouds on the roof again, right? Henry asked. Takato nodded and then looked around for their blonde senior. Where is Naruto? Henry asked, but it was then that Naruto sprung his plan into action. Naruto applied chakra to his feet and then stood up to his full height of five feet, four inches and then let himself fall, Kaluman hanging on tight as Naruto did so. We, Kaluman yelled. Do. Naruto screamed. Takato and Henry jumped back in surprise at the sudden appearance of the shinobi tamer. Ga, Naruto why did you do that? Henry asked. It's rude to scare people. Momentai. Henry Terrierman said as he popped out of the backpack Henry always kept on his person while he was at school so as to hide Terrierman. You take it easy, you don't have a friend who's part shinobi and is popping out of places during conversations Henry said to the rabbit-dog hybrid Digimon. Terrierman chuckled and then his eyes widened. Hey, but I am Naruto's friend dot aren't I? Terrierman asked. Of course you are, as well as Kalumans and Dorumans. Isn't that right guys? Naruto asked. Kaluman giggled and Doraman poked his head down from the leaves and gave a thumbs up to his fellow rookie level. And I'm not part shinobi, I'm full shinobi Naruto corrected the green digivis wielding tamer. The blood is rushing to my head Kaluman said chuckling in a hyperactive tone as he hung upside down like Naruto, clutching the blonde's hair. Naruto smirked humorously and then right himself by quickly dropping down and flipping in midair to land on his feet. Naruto stood up and bowed and then Kaluman fell from his hair and onto the ground. Oh, now I'm dizzy and my head hurts Kaluman said as his large green eyes looked like they were swirling in their sockets. So, Naruto, I have a question for you. Takato asked. Naruto looked at Takato, his sapphire eyes staring into Takato's reddish-brown ones. Ask away Naruto said as he stuffed his hands into the pockets of his pants. Yeah, um, um how long have you been a tamer? Takato asked. Because judging from how you wiped the floor with that Fugaman when we first met you and your skills with fighting Digimon. Three years Naruto replied. Takato and Henry looked at each other and then back at Naruto with their eyes widened in shock. Three years, they exclaimed. Naruto nodded. Well not exactly, time passes faster in my mindscape Naruto said. Mindscape? Henry asked. Yeah, you see due to me having the Kyuubai in me I can go into my very consciousness also called the mindscape and talk to Kyuubai and by using a special jutsu. I can allow others to enter my mind or I can go into theirs. Time also passes faster in one's mind at a rate at which one hour is equal to one year so if you put it into those terms. I have been Doraman's partner for three years and three days, but in reality it's only been three days Naruto explained. All the younger tamers, Terrierman and Kaluman said in awe. Of course Kaluman had no idea what Naruto was talking about, but it sounded fun. Yeah I have another question Takato said. Well actually, we both have the same question to ask you Henry said. Is this why you two said you were looking for me? The blonde asked. The two 12-year-old tamers nodded. Hi, we were wondering if maybe. Henry paused. You tell him Takato. Nanny, well um um yeah okay. We were wondering if you could possibly teach us to fight better with our Digimon. The goggle-wearing tamer said with his head bowed down as he expected Naruto to just plainly say no. But Naruto's eyes widened in shock. Oi, Henry, why wasn't I informed of this particular subject? Terrierman asked. Because I knew you would react like this the dark-eyed tamer replied. But I don't want to do this Henry. Terrierman whined. Well then I guess I'll stop bringing you to school with me and have you stay with Susie so you can pee winces pee wetty pants again. Henry said flopping Terrierman's ears like Susie always would when they played pee winces pee wetty pants. Terrierman grabbed his ears and shuddered. Okay, I'll behave, I'll learn just don't make me go back. The dress, anything but the dress, well actually I'd prefer nothing, but you get my point Terrierman said. Doraman smirked at Terrierman and then the dog rabbit Digimon looked at the dragon and sweat dropped. So then, Piwin says Piwetty Pants is it now? Doraman asked. The green marking covered rookie side and face palmed himself. I should have known Doraman would have used this as blackmail Terrierman thought. Extreme blackmail for you, my little friend Doraman said, I wonder if I should tell Gilman. Please, momentai Doraman, momentai. So you guys want dot me Naruto pointed at himself to teach you? He asked pointing at Takato and Henry. The two nodded on how to fight and fight good when you fight Digimon that bio emerge. The two nodded again. Naruto smiled his foxy smile and nodded. Sure I'll teach you, but it's going to be tough understand. Naruto said. 
Hi, Naruto-sensei the two said with a bow. Naruto smirked. Um, Naruto-sensei has a nice ring to it, he said to himself. Naruto then bent down and picked up Kaluman and handed him back to Doruman as the bell rang for class to start back in the end of break time. Well I'll come back for you two later Naruto said to Kaluman and Doruman who nodded. Naruto then smiled evilly and turned to Takato, Henry and Terrierman. As for you two, at the end of school meet back here and follow me to the park and we'll train there where Gilman is, okay? Naruto asked. Hi the two replied, but with gulps of fear for they had just realized the grave mistake they made with making a sadistic Jinchuriki their teacher. Naruto nodded and then used Shunchen, vanishing in a swirl of leaves as he appeared outside the classroom door without anybody noticing his sudden appearance. Okay class, today we'll be doing something different today. Mr. Kazuma said as he rushed into class knocking Naruto to the floor in the process. Naruto groaned and glared at his teacher. I'm going to kill that man one day. First a fucking lecture on bread and now he fucking pushes me down on the floor. What the fuck? Naruto thought as he stood up and then made his way over to his desk. But then he saw his Digimon card case had been unclipped from his belt and his D-Arc. Digivis had fallen out of his pocket. He quickly picked them up and put them in his pocket while also reattaching the card case to his belt using the case's built-in clip before anyone noticed. What do you think is this thing Mr. Kazuma's talking about? Katsumi asked her blonde friend. I think he might actually do something we like for a change. Of course that's a big I think Kiyoshi said. SHHH. He's about to say what it is Naruto said. Okay class, today we will be doing a fun exercise Mr. Kazuma said with an excited expression, and then looked over the class. It was quiet and they all had a bored expression on their faces, a cricket could be heard chirping too. Yes, well today we shall be doing something never thought of to be done in the history of teaching. First of all how many of you are interested in computer technology or any technology for that matter? Mr. Kazuma asked. The entire class raised their hands. Naruto had no idea what a computer was though since Konoha had no technology other than television and automatic kanai and shuriken launchers which were made in Yukiagakura and exported to them. Now how many of you like computer games? He asked. Again the entire class raised their hands. Mr. Kazuma smiled and nodded. Now then how many of you like Digimon? The entire class raised their hands, but this time with more vigor than the last two questions. Where are we going? Just tell us already Mr. Kazuma Katsumi whined. Yeah, Mr. Kazuma, as soon as you mentioned Digimon I was interested. Well actually I was interested at computers, but still. Kiyoshi said. Everyone's sweat dropped at Kiyoshi. Baka they thought. Mr. Kazuma cleared his throat and smiled. Well class, today I got permission from the principal to take the class along with myself to the Diggy Calm Inc. The Digimon Gaming Factory, the place where Digimon games and the cards are made, Mr. Kazuma said. The children's eyes brightened and they immediately began cheering. But it was short-lived as Mr. Kazuma said, however, the principal said we can't go today. But he said by next week Monday which is only a few days away since it's Wednesday today besides I need to make permission slip forms for your parents Mr. Kazuma said. Naruto's face immediately lost its emotions and his face became a bit pale. Permission slips for my parents but I have none Naruto thought with mental shock. Katsumi looked at Naruto and saw his look of melancholy. Naruto dot are you okay? The redhead asked. The whisker marked blonde turned to his red-headed friend and nodded with a smile. Yeah, I'm fine, just a bit sick today. It was chilly in my apartment today Naruto said. Katsumi nodded and dropped the topic. Hey guys isn't this great? Going to the Digimon gaming factory? How cool is that? Kiyoshi asked. Pretty cool. Kiyoshi Naruto said. Of course they don't realize the danger they are in since Digimon are actually real he added in his thoughts. Well of course they don't. They are humans. Naruto a voice said. Naruto's eyes widened in shock. Voice. The voice from the blue card. Is that you? Naruto thought his question. He then looked at his card case and saw the faint blue glow that came from it. Of course it's me. Did you miss me, Naruto? The voice said with a childish chuckle. So how are you liking my world so far? Well it's okay, but what do you mean your world? Naruto asked. Well I gave you this blue card, you should realize what I am by now Naruto the voice said. Naruto's eyes widened as he continued to watch his friends and other classmates jump for joy and started talking about what they would do at the Digimon factory. Luckily Katsuki and Kiyoshi were too busy talking to their friends to notice the spaced out look on Naruto's face. You dot your A. Naruto couldn't finish the reply. The voice chuckled. Yes, I am a Digimon. I also notice you have a Digimon partner, young Doruman, the ex-antibody holder. Well although that ex-antibody and his digital makeup may not be of use he seems to be quite strong. You chose well. The voice said. 
Huh? How do you know about Doraemon? Naruto asked. Remember Naruto, I know everything about you. Well I guess it's time for me to go. Being trapped in this prison takes up quite a bit of power to communicate with you the voice said. Mateo, voice, who are you? Where are you going? Where are you trapped? Naruto asked rapidly. The voice chuckled. In due time my young tamer. In due time the voice then disappeared and the blue glow left Naruto's card case. Naruto blinked before opening his card case and looking through before spotting the blue card. Who are you? Naruto thought with one last thought before putting it away. Digital World Lusimon's Prison Lusimon, the young blonde-haired, male, humanoid-looking Digimon, panted slightly as he flapped his eight angelic wings. The purple markings on his body as well as the digital hazard sign on his right hand were glowing a faint blue before reverting back to purple. The two wings sprouting from his head flapped in a nervous manner before calming down and the two rings around each of his wrists and ankles that were previously glowing a golden color stopped glowing. Dear Kami, being trapped in this prison is taking its toll on my strength, and it took longer than I thought to re-communicate with Naruto again. I need to get Naruto into the digital world again. Those stupid digital sovereigns always butting into my business and sending him to the real world. Naruto is the only one who could release me from here, Lusaman said and then took a deep breath as he watched through the orb that showed him everything that went on in the human world. But the image always showed what Naruto was doing. If it weren't for those ten legendary warriors in the beginning I would be the ruler of my own digital world and my universe. Lusaman growled as he remembered those ten legendary warriors. Ancient Greyman of the Fire Element, Ancient Garuman of the Light Element, Ancient Beetleman of the Thunder Element, Ancient Kaisman of the Wind Element, Ancient Megatherium of the Ice Element, Ancient Weissman of the Steel Element, Ancient Volcaman of the Earth Element, Ancient Troyaman of the Wood Element. Ancient Mermaiman of the Water Element and Ancient Sphinxman of the Darkness Ten Digimon stood up to him and using their most powerful attacks, broke through his Shadow Lord Behemoth while he was inside the dark orb his beast puppet held. When this happened, the Orb of Darkness released Lusimon's true mega form. Lusimon Larva Mode and then the resulting explosion was so large it nearly killed him had he not opened a wormhole, and escaped to the very digital world he was in now. However, before he left he looked around and saw that all the legendary warriors had died in the explosion dot 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 all of them save for the strongest two of the ten. Ancient Greyman and Ancient Gararuman. Those two were the very embodiment of what Lusimon hated, friendship and the courage to fight off anything that comes their way. Then Lusimon, still in his larva form, escaped and then tried to conquer this digital world. However, it was then that the sovereigns were created, having achieved the mega level of digivolution. The five sovereigns saw Lusimon and saw as he reverted back into his rookie form. Lusimon remembered how those fools cared for and nurtured him back to full strength. Before he pulled the betrayal card on them, he attacked the five as he knew that in the early stages of this digital world all Digimon would follow him and he would be their leader. Finally he would be a ruler. However Fanglongman was found to still be standing. The other four unconscious and Lusimon was in his chaos form. Having the powers over the six elements of water, fire, steel, light, darkness and lightning, the dragon of the center, created a dark prison that Lusimon would forever spend his digital life in and made it so that as time went on Lusimon's power would decrease and the prison also took away Lusimon's power to digivolve. Special elemental locks were made so that only a powerful attack could break it or only if the sovereigns themselves unlocked them. Naruto. You. Well actually it is the beast inside you that can grant me my salvation. My freedom. Lusimon said as he watched the orb. The angelic rookie level Digimon looked around his prison. The large sphere with many glowing symbols in golden light. The symbols each extended from a large symbol in silver light that reached to the top of the sphere, which was a large silver symbol. Each silver symbol acted as a lock which could only be opened through the use of a powerful attack or by the Digimon that put those locks there, the sovereigns. One was the image of the kanji for turtle, the other for phoenix, another for tiger, one for dragon and the fifth lock was made up of two symbols, the kanji for light and the kanji for darkness. The only Digimon ever represent the two most powerful elements ever created by Kami, Fanglongman. That Baka Ryu, idiotic dragon if it weren't for him and the other sovereigns I would be ruler of the digital world by now. Lusaman growled, and because of these stupid locks I can't digivolve. Smart ass Fanglongman thought of everything when he knocked me unconscious when the sovereigns defeated me. Lusaman then walked towards the edge of the dark sphere that was his prison and reached out to touch it. But then white and black electricity shot out and sent the rookie level Digimon back and shocking him in the process. Kuso, I swear when I get out of here the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to kill Fanglongman and the Sovereigns and their data and then. 
Lusimon chuckled evilly. It's on to the real world so I can be the ruler of both this world and that one Lusimon then released a demonic laugh. Soon I will be free soon the demonic personality of Lusimon said. Shinjuku Park after school. Naruto and Doruman were standing in front of Takato and Gilman and Henry and Terrierman. Kaluman giggled as he watched from a nearby tree. Okay are you all ready for some training? Naruto asked. Hi Takato, Gilman and Henry said. No Terrierman said. Everyone turned to Terrierman and sweat dropped. Okay, in your first lessons today, I shall teach you about how to build physical strength stamina. Now listen, although your Digimon may be the one fighting the other Digimon there will be a time when you will be separated from your Digimon and you will be forced to fight on your own. Naruto said and continued to explain his training. Geez, Naruto sounds like a drill sergeant Takato mumbled to Gilman. Takataman, what's a drill sergeant? The red dinosaur Digimon asked. Takato's sweat dropped. Wrong guy to speak to Takato said. Therefore, when your Digimon is not there I will teach you how to fight, and I will have you and your Digimon go through physical training drills that I myself have been through Naruto instructed. Is that understood? Naruto asked with a serious look. Nobody answered. I said is that understood, maggots? Naruto roared. Hi, Naruto sensei. The Digimon and their tamers replied. Good, now start off by giving me five laps around this entire park. Move it, move it, move it Naruto barked. Kaluman then dropped down onto Naruto's head and the group of tamers and Digimon ran around the park. After the five laps the four consisting of Takato, Gilman, Henry and Terrierman were exhausted from the little jog Naruto has described their run as. Alright, next we do 50 push-ups, go, go, go. Naruto roared and then he and Doraman dropped onto the ground. Kaluman tried to do the push-ups like his friends, but... Oh, why can't I do this? Kaluman asked. Naruto continued doing push-ups and frowned as he watched Kaluman struggle to copy him. It's okay buddy, it's just you don't have any fingers and so you can't do it Naruto explained, but then began showing off by doing one-handed push-ups in order to pet Kaluman on his head. Don't worry, we still think you are cute the blonde tamer told the light of Digivolution. The holder of the Matrix Crystal smiled before jumping onto Naruto's back as the whisker mark tamer did push-ups. After the 50 push-ups the group was still tired, well except for Naruto, Doruman and Kaluman. Alright, guys that was a good warm-up Naruto said clapping his hands together. Henry and Takato looked at Naruto as shock. Warm-up, they exclaimed. Well yeah, I told you all that I would be teaching you to do the exercises like what I did back in my days as a ninja. And besides you guys asked for this Naruto told them. The goggle-wearing tamer and the politely acting tamer side, dropping their heads. He's right they thought before they looked up at Naruto. So what's next? Naruto sensei. Takato asked. Naruto smirked and then looked at the four. Doraman Naruto called his Digimon partner. The purple dragon Digimon walked up next to Naruto. Hi, take Terrierman and Gilman and I'll take Takato and Henry we're going to teach these guys how to fight Naruto said. Then Naruto saw Henry raise his hand. Yes, Henry, Naruto asked. Excuse me, Naruto sensei, but I have been taught how to fight in the martial arts so. No you cannot skip this, think of this as a way of diversifying your fighting style, and allowing you to grasp another method of fighting in case the martial arts fail Naruto explained. Naruto then nodded to Doraman and the Digimon and Tamers split up into their groups. For the next few hours, Naruto taught the two Tamers how to fight, Takato having more difficulty in doing so due to him never having to use katas or any other physical fighting move other than in his video games. He also taught them some good combinations for them to use with their Digimon using modification cards. Gilman and Terrierman were taught by Doraman to improve their reflexive actions and also to use their limbs and strike back when they were in a tight situation as well as combining melee Play moves with their Digimon attacks that allowed them to use physical damage using their bodies. The sun was setting as the training was about to come to a close. Takato, Gilman, Henry and Terrierman Naruto said with a smile at his students. Doruman and Kaluman were smiling at the sweaty and exhausted tamers and their Digimon. The Digimon and their tamers panted, Gilman lying down on the ground with Terrierman while Henry and Takato grasped their knees. H.H. Hi gasp and N. Naruto SS Sensei wheezed the four managed to gasp out. Naruto looked at his watch. A black and red colored G-Shock with orange colored hands that could tell digital and analog time, tell the date, had a built-in alarm, light when you pressed a button, timer as well as being waterproof and pressure resistant since the watch was built for divers and hikers in order to withstand the pressure. It also had a digital compass and a barometer. He had bought it when he sent a cageman shin to get some food and drinks for his friends and the clone saw the watch in the window and decided to buy it as it was quite useful and it cost quite a bit of money. Apparently the scroll of his father and his mother contained a secret blood seal hidden behind the scrolls that were locked using a blood seal, 
and inside those seals were the entire Yuzumaki and Namikaze treasuries which in simple terms was a hell of a lot of money. Naruto was a billionaire. You four have made me proud these past. Naruto glanced at his watch. Four hours that I will end your training. Naruto was interrupted when his students cheered at the mention of ending training. But their happiness was short-lived as Naruto continued his sentence. I will end your training with one more exercise. He continued causing the four to slump in disappointment earning a chuckle from him. Doruman and Kaluman. Your final exercise for the eye will be to fight me and Doruman. Both of you against us Naruto said. Terriermen and Gilman looked at their tamers for acceptance to fight. Not they had much of a choice though. Well okay. But if things get too rough I'm stopping Terriermen from fighting Henry said. It's in his blood Henry. Terriermen's going to have to fight sometimes Naruto said. Well then bring it on Naruto Takato said. Naruto nodded. That's the attitude I'm looking for Takato. Now let's go Naruto said. Doraman against Gilman and Terriermen. Kaluman sat atop Naruto's head and smirked as they began to fight. Oh boy, a game? I love games Kaluman said. Can we play tag? Kaluman asked Naruto. Naruto glanced upwards at Kaluman and sweat dropped. Kaluman dot 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 how much sugar do you have in your system? He asked. Kaluman tilted his head innocently to the side and looked at Naruto with a perplexed look. What is sugar, Naruto? The white little Digimon asked. Naruto's sweat drop grew bigger at the question which meant that Kaluman was naturally hyperactive. Then he shifted his gaze from Kaluman to the fight going on. No holding back guys, okay. Doraman said. Of course, Doraman sensei Gilman said. Terriermen and Gilman then rushed Doraman who jumped over them. The two watched the purple dragon flip in midair before landing and quickly twisting on his feet and opening his maw. Metal shoot. Doraman roared and five metal spheres rocketed from the Digimon's mouth. Terriermen and Gilman avoided the spheres, but were too distracted as Doraman followed up with a cry of dash metal. Doraman rocketed towards his training opponents and crashed into their bodies with the force of a metal bar. Gilman and Terriermen flew back and crashed down into the ground. Come on Gilman, Terriermen. Get up Doraman said. The two young rookies climbed to their feet and glared at Doraman who taunted them with a commotion with his clawed hand, paw. Gilman then rushed Doraman and tried to slash Doraman. But he leaned to left and avoided the attack before grabbing Gilman's arms and swinging the larger rookie Digimon into the ground. But he was suddenly blindsided as small green bullets of energy stung his body. Bunny blast. Terriermen cried as he fired more green energy bullets. As Doraman fended off the bullets, Gilman had gotten up and then charged Doraman. Fire then surrounded the dinosaur virus type before it crashed against Doraman's side. Rock breaker. Gilman cried. Doraman grunted in pain, but managed to take the attack and skid along the ground kicking up dirt. Doraman chuckled and smiled at his students. Good job you two, but playtime is over time to take it up a notch Doraman said. Hyper dash metal. The more experienced rookie cried before rushing Terriermen. Terriermen smirked before jumping into the air and spinning. Terrier tornado. Terriermen cried and then an emerald twister formed as wind whipped up around the small dog rabbit Digimon sucking in Doraman due to his close proximity to the tornado. Doraman swirled around in a dizzying circle before being shot out of the top of the tornado. Terriermen stopped spinning and turned to Gilman. Now Gilman, he cried. The virus-type dinosaur nodded and then opened his mouth, and a ball of red flame formed in his mouth. Pyrosphere. Gilman yelled and then a small, but powerful sphere of fire rocketed towards Doraman. Naruto, a little help here Doraman called to his tamer. Naruto nodded and then took out a card from his card case. He took one card he found useful and swiped it through the slit in his D-Arc. Digimodify, Greyman's Nova Blast activate. Naruto cried. Doraman smirked as he opened his maw and a large and powerful ball of fire flew from his mouth and clashed with the pyrosphere. Naruto then took out another card and swiped it. Digimodify, Gararuman's Howling Blaster. The card swiped through the D-Arc and then blue flames flew out of Doraman's mouth. Henry and Takato quickly took out their own cards. Digimodify, Wargraman's Brave Shield Activate. Henry yelled as he used the card. Terriermen soon held a large yellow shield made entirely out of chrome digizoid, the most powerful metal in the digital world, emblazoned with the crest of courage in orange. Terriermen jumped in front of Gilman and held up the Brave Shield blocking the attack. As the shield vanished, Takato swiped his card. Get ready Gilman Takato said. Right, Takataman Gilman said and then jumped into the air. Digimodify, hyper wing activate. Takato yelled. Gilman suddenly sprouted six silvery white wings from his back and flew through the air, and with a yell of pyrosphere began raining down fireballs on Doraman. Doraman avoided all of them before jumping into the air. Naruto then grabbed a card and swiped it through the D-Arc. Digimodify, Omnimon's Supreme Cannon. 
Naruto yelled. Doraemon's eyes widened as Naruto used one of their more powerful cards. The cannon in the shape of metal Garuruman's head formed on Doraemon's left arm before it charged up energy and fired a blue blast of energy and nearly struck Gilman had he not dodged. Doraemon and Gilman touched down and Doraemon turned to Naruto. That's it, the match is over. Naruto what the hell? Doraemon yelled. What? We were doing great and it seemed like Gilman and Terriermon were doing great also Naruto said. Doruman glared at Naruto and then turned to tell Henry and Takato to go home. The two tamers and their Digimon, well actually Gilman went back to his shed in the park before Takato left. When the two younger tamers left, Doruman's gaze returned to Naruto. What the hell were you thinking? Doruman roared in anger. What do you mean? The blonde asked. You use the Omniman's Supreme Cannon card. That is one of our most powerful cards and could have killed Gilman Doraman explained, his tone seething with rage. Gilman reacted fast enough and besides they will have to be facing strong opponents in the near future Naruto roared back. Doraman and Naruto glared at each other. And what if the attack had hit? What if Gilman couldn't dodge in time? Takato would have lost his partner and would no longer have been a tamer Doraman said. No one cares about Gilman, he can be remade. Naruto cried. Then Naruto froze and his his eyes widened at what he just said. And Doraman stared in shock at Naruto. Naruto, do you not even care about Gilman or Takato? Doraman asked. Doraman I didn't mean for it to come out like that, I just meant that. Naruto sighed as he saw his partner walk away. I just wanted them to face something stronger than they could handle and help them grow. I didn't mean to hit Gilman and you know that I would never say anything like that about a comrade Doraman stopped walking and looked back at Naruto over his shoulder. You know Naruto, I thought you of all people would know that true strength doesn't come from the individual strength of the tamer or the Digimon it's the combined strength and the powerful bond between tamer and Digimon. After all you were the one who taught me that Doraman said. Naruto sighed and then walked after Doraman. Hypno's HQ. Riley and her other brown-haired female assistant typist were rapidly typing on their colorful keyboards as they sat atop the rotating chair that helped them see the entire map of the area of Shinjuku in the digital data stream. The two women's fingers flew across their keyboards until Riley discovered something. Yamaki, there's a disturbance going on in West Shinjuku, Riley said. Is it another wild one attempting to bio-emerge? Yamaki asked as he played with the cigarette lighter he always had on his person. No sir, it seems to be just a random digital flux that has caused a massive digital field to form. But it's steadily growing larger Riley explained. Yamaki scowled. Well I have just the thing to get rid of it the blonde sunglasses wearing man said as he used the controls to bring Riley and her companion to ground level. Yamaki then had her and the other girl walk over to the Hypno's computer programming uploader and then handed them a small floppy blue floppy disk with one word written on it. Yugoff. What is Yugoff? Riley asked. Project Yugoth is a program I have been working on for a while now. It is programmed to find any digital fluctuations and destroy them, including any wild ones that could attempt to break free from the digital world Yamaki said. Yamaki, is this program even approved by the board? I mean we could get in some deep shit if. Yamaki slammed his hand on the computer uploader and scowled at Riley. Listen here Riley, I don't give a damn rat's ass about what those assholes on the board think or say. Without me hypnos wouldn't even be functioning. Now run the damn program or else it will be you who will be in deep shit and out of a job. Yamaki ordered. Riley nodded and then typed away at the keyboard before entering Yugoth into the floppy drive. A red bar then showed up with 3% of the program already loaded into Hypno's system. Estimated time for uploading. 30 minutes Riley said. Yamaki nodded and then turned away and sent the other typist and Riley's best friend. Home. Meanwhile with Takato and Gilman. As Gilman and Takato were walking back to the hideout for Gilman to stay, Gilman had spotted a squirrel and began chasing it. Squirrels, Gilman exclaimed with childish glee and began to pursue the furry tree-dwelling rodent. Gilman no, Takato yelled and then chased after the dinosaur Digimon and the squirrel. The chase continued for a good five minute before the squirrel jumped over a small rock and through a hole in a wall that led to the Shinjuku tunnel that was still under construction. It was mostly finished, but needed some slight modifications before it could be used. Gilman, don't do that, next thing somebody finds you and I lose you Takato said. Gilman's pointed ears dropped in sadness. Gilman Nasai, Takataman, but it's so much fun to chase squirrels Gilman said. Okay, but promise me you won't leave me again Takato said and then looked up at the moon. You know Gilman dot it is so hard to picture my life without you now that I've gotten used to your antics. I promise Takataman Gilman said with a toothy grin and will always be friend no matter what. Of course, why wouldn't I be your friend Gilman said tilting his head to the side and slightly flapping his ears in confusion. Takato was about to respond when Gilman spoke again. Takato, I feel funny dot like I'm fading Gilman said. 
Takato turned and saw Gilman was fading from the neck down leaving only his head in a non-blurred image. Takato cried out in shock and pulled Gilman away from where he was standing. But it was no use and Gilman vanished. No Gilman you promised you wouldn't leave me. Takato cried with tears streaming down his face. Gilman looked at Takato as his hands phased through his own body. Don't worry Takato, I'll be back and I won't forget you Gilman said before vanishing into red dust. Takato screamed to the night sky and slammed his fists on the ground. Gilmuun. Takato continued to take out his emotions on the poor defenseless pavement before he heard a beeping sound. He took out his D-Arc from his pocket since hat was where the beeping came from. The compass aspect that detected digital signals activated and a red arrow swirled around in a circular motion before pointing to Takato's right. Takato looked to his right and saw dot the entrance to the Shinjuku tunnel. I gotta get help Takato said and then ran back home to use the phone so he could call the others. Takato's house ack. A Matsuki's bakery. Takato ran through the door and upstairs to his room where he had a phone. Takato. His mother called. Where have you been? Nowhere. Gotta call Henry and Naruto Takato said hurriedly. Takato's parents looked at each other and shrugged before going back to their usual business, washing the dishes and reading the papers. Takato went up to his room and quickly dialed the number for Henry's apartment. Henry's apartment. The phone began ringing and a little girl with light purple colored hair, brown eyes and seemed to be around six years old played with a doll that strangely looked like Terrierman. The little girl wore a pink shirt and short pants and pink socks. This was Henry's youngest sibling, Susie Wonk. And then Piwin says Piwetty Pants flew off to her magical castle before. The little girl stopped playing with the Terrierman doll and dropped it on the floor. She ran to the ringing telephone and answered it seeing a picture of Takato on the video part of the phone. Hello, I'm Susie and you are. Susie asked. I'm Takato. Now can you give Henry, your brother, the phone? Takato exclaimed. Susie didn't like Takato's tone of voice, but complied with his request. Henry. Susie yelled. Henry sighed from within the confines of his room and walked out to see Susie holding the phone and Terrierman dressed in a pink dress, lying there motionless on the floor. Poor, poor Terrierman having to endure his life as Piwincess Piwetty pants Henry thought. Henry there's some angry kid on the phone for you Susie said. Henry sighed. I'm not angry Takato said, I'm just want to talk to Henry, I mean Henry. Angry ha huh? Henry said with a sigh and took the phone from the young six-year-old. This better be good Takato, it's late Henry said. Henry thank goodness, I need your help, it's Gilman he's vanished into thin air, like he was being erased by a demonic digital pencil, and I need your help to get him back. Meet me by the Shinjuku tunnel, Takato said. Henry noticed the urgency in Takato's voice and knew the goggle-wearing tamer was not lying or joking. Okay, I'm on my way Henry said and then quickly looked at Susie. Are you going somewhere, Henry? Susie asked as Henry put on his sneakers. Hi, but Susie I'm going to need Terrierman. You know cause he can protect me Henry said. Susie frowned, but then smiled. Okay, two women, go help Henry Susie said and threw the pink dress clad doll at Henry. Henry quickly took off the dress and handed it to his younger sibling before racing out the door. Entrance of Shinjuku Tunnel Takato waited anxiously before he looked up upon hearing the sound of rapid footsteps, like that of running. Takato smiled as he looked to see Henry with Terrierman on his head running towards him. Henry you made it Takato said with happiness. Then they turned to see the blonde and the purple dragon Digimon running towards the pair of tamers. It's you Takato said with joy. It's him, it's me aren't you glad to see us? Doruman said with a smile. Naruto bopped Doruman on the head. I have the strangest feeling that I should have said that line. Odd Terrierman thought. Okay so what happened to Gilman? Henry asked. Well if it isn't Goggle Head and Whiskers and I haven't come up with a name for you yet a female voice said. Everyone turned to see Rika and Renamon walking up to them. Rika, Naruto asked, what are you doing here? I was looking for some Digimon to absorb. But instead I find you three hanging out here Rika explained. So Takata what were you saying? Naruto asked, there's something up with the tunnel. Just a few minutes ago I was talking with Gilman after he chased a squirrel. And then he vanished as if he were attacked by a malevolent pencil. My Digivus pointed out Gilman's signal inside the tunnel. But I don't want to go by myself Takato said. Naruto rested his hand on the younger boy's shoulder. Don't worry Takato, we will help you get back Gilman Naruto said with determination in his eyes. Takato nodded and then the three boys jumped the fence. Doruman and Terriman were about to follow. But Naruto turned to see them running towards the fence. And stop you too, he yelled. The two rookie level Digimon stopped and looked at Naruto before looking at themselves and gasped in shock as they saw their bodies becoming blurred and fading away. They then returned to normal as they stepped away from the fence. Hum it seems the anomaly is only affecting the Digimon. 
Renamon, it would be wise if you stayed out here with Terrorman and Doruman in the meanwhile, Henry said. Renamon didn't say anything, but took a few steps away from the fence. Hey, don't order around my Digimon. Renamon is to only listen to me, Rika said with a glare at the Asian tamer. The three males then looked at each other and then at Rika. So are you coming or not? Tekado asked. PFFT, acting like you care about that stupid piece of data. Ridiculous, Rika said. Rika, I thought you got over the fact that Digimon aren't data and that they having hearts and souls, Naruto said. Rika turned and huffed in anger. Naruto sighed. Akuzo Minasan, let's go everyone, Naruto said, and the three boys raced into the darkness of the tunnel. Rika looked at the place where they entered the tunnel and sighed. You know you could have just gone with them, Renamon said. I never said I wanted to go, but I guess I will have to if I want to keep them from killing themselves, Rika said. The red-haired tamer then jumped the fence and the golden fox sighed. Momentai Renamon, she'll be fine, Terrierman said. Renamon sighed again and looked at the two other rookie-level Digimon. So Renachan, how was your day? Doroman asked with a joking smirk. Renamon ignored the poor attempt at flirting and looked at the others. Gosh, do you have any deep dark secrets that happened during the day? Terrierman asked. You're one to talk. I know one particular secret of yours and Susie would just love for people to know about it, Doroman said. Though you swore you would never speak of it again, Terrierman cried. I never said such a thing. Hey Renamon, would you like to hear the tales of Pwincess Pwetty Pants over here? Doruman asked with an evil smile. Renamon's eyes brightened in amusement as she looked at Terrierman. Oh, do tell the fox Digimon said. Hino's HQ. Riley and Yamaki were alone in the Hypno's top floor as Riley typed away on the computer. And Yamaki played with his cigarette lighter he seemed to never use. Yamaki, there is a digital anomaly in the new Shinjuku tunnel. It seems to be quite large Riley said. Yamaki looked at the large red dot shown on the hologram of the town of Shinjuku. Is it another wild one attempting to enter? Yamaki asked. No, but it seems to be growing Riley said as she ran a digital analysis of the anomaly. Yamaki walked over to Riley and held out a small disc with a sing word on it. Y-U-G-G-O-T-H. What the hell is Yugoth? Riley asked. It's a program I've been writing up and I've finally completed it. I made specifically to destroy any wild ones and digital anomalies that should surface. Those digital scum won't know what them. So think of this as the program's test run Yamaki said. Has this program been approved by the board? I mean if it's not we could be in some serious shit the red-haired computer expert said. Yamaki slammed his hands down on the metal table that Riley was using as she looked at the monitor causing her to jump. Listen here Riley, I don't give a rat's ass about what those assholes on the board think. Without me this entire operation would be crumbling so run the Kami Forsaken program or you'll find yourself out of a job Yamaki growled. Riley didn't have looked past his shades to know the blonde man was not happy and nodded before taking the disc and popping it into the Hypni's hard drive. A large red bar showed up on the screen with 3% of the program already loaded. Estimated time to complete Yugoth program upload dot 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 10 minutes Riley said. The blonde man nodded and then smirked. This project Yugoth will change the very way we take down these wild ones he thought. Inside Shinjuku Tunnel, Naruto, Takato and Henry were walking down the tunnel that was lit with red-colored light bulbs. As they walked through they stopped and looked behind them to see Rika running after them and then stopping as she caught up with them. You came, Takato exclaimed. I thought you didn't want to deal with the likes of us data-loving freaks. Naruto asked with a smirk. Shut it whiskers before I shut your mouth myself Rika said growling. Luo, I like a girl with a little fire in her eyes Naruto said and then playfully winked at her causing the girl to blush slightly. You're a sigh whiskers, I just came because you guys would have killed yourselves if I wasn't around Rika said. Alwa, you hear that guys? She cares Naruto said with mock surprise. The Digimon queen growled as she glared at the three males who were laughing at her. Let's just go already Rika said and then rushed past them. The boys smirked at her and gave a mock salute before following the Digimon queen. The group walked for a few minutes before they came to a large digital field. Takato took out his beeping Digivus and the red arrow on it pointed directly at the digital field. Dilman's in there Takato said. Mateo, Takato you don't know what's in there Henry said. Yes I do. Gilman's in there and he's friend and I intend on bringing him back Takato said and then jumped through the digital field. The others quickly followed and then found themselves floating in a large blue mass of pure data. Wow dot so this how a cloud feels Naruto mumbled to himself as he floated for a while. No wonder Shikamaru wanted to be one. Oh shut up whiskers and let's find that stupid Gilman so let's go Rika said. Takato was busy looking for Gilman and after a few seconds he saw a large amount of tentacles wrapped around a red colored lizard. Look guys, over there I see Gilman, Takato said. The three other tamers looked in Takato's direction and saw the tentacle-wrapped Gilman. Look Takato he's gift-wrapped just for you Naruto joked. 
Takato ignored him and then using the breaststroke movements the four tamers swam through the digital mass towards Gilman. However, as they were moving, Naruto looked up and saw the digital field was beginning to disintegrate into red particles. Oh guys, we better step on it cause the digital field is kind of disappearing Naruto pointed out. Well then hurry up and move Takato said. Takato there is no way we'll make it in time Henry said. Oh yes we will Naruto said and then formed two cagemenshins. Each cagemenshin then grabbed Takato's arms and then with a might heave they threw him towards Gilman at the speed of what Takato felt was the speed of a bullet. Takato then grabbed the tentacles and began to tear them off. Gilman woke up as the tentacles were being ripped off his person. Takatoman what's wrong and why am I wrapped up? Am I somebody's present? Gilman asked. No, now help me cut them Takato said. Gilman nodded and then performed his rock breaker attack before slicing through the tentacles with his claws of flame. Good to have you back boy Takato said. Where have I been the dinosaur virus type Digimon thought. Then Gilman glowed red and a road of crimson led the way out. Pra, we'll never make it out, we don't even know which way to go Henry complained. Look, Gilman's energy is making a path, let's go Rika said. The four humans and one Digimon quickly ran along the road as the red particles of the now nearly destroyed digital field were gaining on them. The five then jumped through and made out alive. Phew, that was close Takato said. You can say that again. Henry said. Phew that was. Not literally you baka Henry yelled to the goggle wearing preteen. The group then went outside and then went back to their individual homes. Hypno's HQ. Riley stared at the screen and watched the red dot on the hologram of Shinjuku disappear. Sir, Project Yugoth has terminated the digital field Riley said. Yamaki smiled in satisfaction. Excellent. The wild ones will never expect something like Yugoth to hit them and then the real world will finally be rid of those digital scum. Yamaki said and then began laughing loudly to the ceiling. The weekend Saturday, Naruto and Doraman sat staring at the permission slip that Naruto had gotten from Mr. Kazuma for the field trip to the Digimon factory. Naruto, just sign the damn thing with a forged signature. Kazuma doesn't even know your parents are dead and you live in an apartment with a Digimon Doraman said. Naruto looked at his Digimon partner. Doraman, I can't just write a forged signature anymore. Mr. Kazuma has the memory of an elephant. He knows everybody's handwriting styles, which is why I needed you to sign it Naruto said as he took a pen out from his pocket and handed it to the Digimon. The dragon with fur stared at the pen and sighed. All right fine, I'll be your Akachan. But you owe me Doraman said as he scribbled a little signature with the name Kushina Yuzumaki with a little smiley face after it. Why the smiley face? Naruto asked. I like smiley faces Doraman replied. Naruto sighed and then folded up the permission slip in half and then putting it away in his side table drawer. Naruto then made sure his X-shaped buckled belt was on tight enough so his pants wouldn't fall down. He strapped on the Velcro for his sneakers since he had no idea how to tie laces. After all when you were a ninja you don't have time to stop and tie your laces or else you'll get killed. And then strapped on his card case and pocketed his D-Arc. Okay time to go and train Takato and Henry again Naruto said and then turned. But as he was turning he saw something outside the window. A floating digital field was shown in the sky and the digital field expanded a bit, and then a large dragon-like Digimon emerged from it. Naruto looked at the dragon and smirked as he looked at his own little dragon Digimon. Well Doraman, we can give Takato a few more minutes, we got a Digimon to fight Naruto said. Doraman smirked and cracked his neck. Let's go the tamer and his partner rushed out the door and then took to the roofs after jumping up there. They saw the dragon Digimon flying over the buildings and caught up to it, but kept their distance lest it turn its head on them and attack. The unknown Digimon flew over the city, but Naruto decided that Doraman was right patience sucks. Okay Doraman let's hit it Naruto said. Nanny, but what about all that stuff you said last night about patience and all that crap? I realized you were right. Patience sucks, now let's kill this motherfucker Naruto said and then drew a card from his case. Naruto swiped the card and then the dragon Digimon turned as it sensed the energy from the D-Arc. Digimodify, Greyman's Nova Blast activate. Doraman opened his mouth and a large ball of orange and yellow flame burst forth. The dragon flapped its wings and growled at the two before diving down to attack them. Spinning Needle The dragon yelled and then crimson-colored needles emerged from its mouth as the dragon tried to make Naruto and Doraman living pin cushions. The two jumped out of the way and then Naruto's D-Arc went off as it scanned the Digimon. An image of a blue dragon with fiery hair that came out of its white-masked face and at the tip of its tail. 
two shredded looking wings were on its back and blood red eyes and sharp teeth completed the picture. Let's see we have an Airdraman on our hands. He's a champion level, is looked upon as Kami's soldiers due to its wisdom, but still has a quick temper. His attacks are Spinning Needle, Kami Tornado and Wing Cutter. Naruto read from the holographic image of Airdraman and the information below it. Airdraman roared before descending upon the two again and relays another wave of the Spinning Needle attack. Naruto quickly swiped a card. Digimodify, Cyberdraman's Desolation Claw activate. Naruto cried as he slashed the card through the slit on the side of his D-Arc. Doraemon's claws glowed for a brief moment and then Doraemon slashed the air forming an emerald green trail from the movements of his claws. Then the claw trail swirled into a blue sphere before rocketing after Airdraman. Airdraman's eyes widened and then he dodged the attack as it nullified his spinning needle. Kami Tornado. Airdraman yelled and then flapped his wings kicking up a swirling wind that became a large tornado that raced towards the two. Below a crowd saw the tornado began panicking, but Naruto quickly acted and formed hand signs. Dotten, Doryuden no Jutsu, Earth Style, Earth Dragon Blast Jutsu. Naruto yelled and then a large dragon of earth and mud spewed out of his mouth and into the tornado. Airdraman stared in curiosity as to why his opponents had sent their attack into his own. But then his eyes widened as the tornado was dispersed, and the earth dragon roared as it burst through. With glowing yellow eyes, the earth dragon roared before going into to strike Airdraman. Airdraman quickly flapped his wings and flew upwards before flipping in the air, and bringing down his tail on the dragon, shattering it into rubble. Airdraman then flapped his wings again and two crescents of wind shot forth. Wing Cutter, the champion level Digimon cried. Naruto and Doraemon jumped and avoided the attacks before Naruto grabbed Doraemon and threw him at Airdraman. Metal Shoot Doraemon cried and then released multiple metal spheres that struck Airdraman and had the champion level groaning in pain. Then Doraemon reached Airdraman and cocked back his claws and slashed away. However, the opponent's skull armor seemed to be too tough so Doraemon did the next best thing. He grabbed Airdraman's snout and flipped onto the larger dragon's back before opening his jaws. Dino Tooth Doraemon cried before biting down on the champion level Digimon. Airdraman roared in pain as he tried to get the Digimon off of him. Then Doraemon released his jaws on Airdraman before jumping above Airdraman and opening his mouth. Metal Shoot Doraemon's attack crashed down onto the dragon and sent it downwards. Naruto then swiped a card. Digimodify, Speed Activate he yelled and then Doraemon used his upgraded speed to appear next to Naruto on the ground as Airdraman steadied itself. Naruto swiped another card and Doraemon's left arm glowed a fiery red color and a large ball of red flame formed in the rookie Digimon's hand. Digimodify, Geo Greyman's Mega Flame. Then Naruto formed hand signs and took a deep breath. On three Naruto said, One, two, three Doraemon released the Mega Flame and then with a cry of Katan, Karyuendon no Jutsu, Fire Style, Fire Dragon Blast Jutsu. Naruto breathed out a large fire dragon. The fire dragon roared as its blue eyes glared at the digital dragon. The fire dragon then merged with the fireball and grew larger and more powerful. Airdraman flapped his wings and called upon his Kami tornado, but wind fans the flames of death, and then the fire dragon grew even more powerful. Collaboration Jutsu, Seikaiyo no Karyuendon no Jutsu, Collaboration Jutsu, Omega Fire Dragon Blast Jutsu. Naruto and Doraemon cried. Airdraman screamed as the fire dragon engulfed him and then the Digimon exploded into red data. Doraemon was about to go absorb when he looked to see Naruto give him the look. Doraemon sighed. Fine I won't absorb his data. And why? Naruto asked. Doraemon sighed again. Because it's wrong and Digimon with tamers are able to digivolve without the use of absorbed data Doraemon replied with his head down. Naruto walked up and patted his partner's head. Don't worry Doraemon, you'll digivolve just give it time. I mean you are too awesome to digivolve to fight the likes of Airdraman. The fact that you are a rookie level and beat him was proof that you are stronger than a champion level Digimon. I'm sure you could have beaten him without us having to use the Seikaiyo no Karyuendon. Naruto said. Doraemon nodded and smiled. Yeah, you're right. I'm much too awesome to digivolve to fight the likes of those weaklings Doraemon said. Naruto chuckled and then frowned as he saw a large crowd and cursed. I forgot to have Kyuubai put up a Jinjutsu to use for when we fight in public. Because the digital field vanished when Airdraman got out Naruto said cursing his stupidity. Don't worry Kit, I had already done it. The humans below thought that the winds were a freak storm cloud and your fire dragon was just some weird old man using fireworks in broad daylight Kyuubai said. Harigato Kyuubai, where would I be without you? Naruto said, rotting in hole somewhere. It was a figure of speech. Naruto exclaimed to his biju. Kyuubai smiled within his cage. I know. I hate you. Naruto and Doraemon then left and went to meet Takato and Henry for training. The four students consisting of Terriermen, 
Gilman, Takato and Henry stood at attention and ready for Naruto's workout of death. Okay today I'm going to take it easy on you boys since it's Saturday Naruto said. Kaluman was watching from a tree as Naruto had the team do jumping jack, 300 of them. Then had them run one lap around the park. That's it. Henry asked. Yeah, like I said I'm taking it easy on you boys today since it's Saturday Naruto said. They, the four cheered and went back home. Gilman going back into his cage with the bag of bread that Takato gave him to last the night and for breakfast. Takato and Naruto lived near each other perpendicular streets so Takato and Naruto and Doraman walked home together. Then as they were walking the three began hearing rumors. Hey did you guys hear about that stalker in the park? Yeah, they said it's a pyromaniac who likes spooking couples when they are on dates and stuff. That's horrible. Somebody should do something. Yeah people think it's just a kid pulling pranks so teachers from Shinjuku Junior High are going to be patrolling the school along with a few police officers. Naruto, Takato and Doraman looked at each other. Don't even think of it Takato, Gilman would never even do such a thing. He's too loyal to you Naruto said. Listen Naruto, you and I will go and check it out tonight and we'll see if it's really Gilman okay. Doraman said. Takato nodded and then left. Nighttime Shinjuku Park. Gilman was sitting in his little shed and eating his bread. Yummy, yummy bread. I love bread Gilman said. That was when he heard a rustling in the trees. The virus Digimon stopped eating and looked up to see a little purple Digimon with a white face and green eyes. He wore red gloves and a scarf with a winking face with its tongue sticking out. Oi there pineapple head the short Digimon said. Who are you? Gilman asked. Name's Impmon pineapple head. Look at you. Oh beyond humans it makes me sick to my stomach and in order to cure that. Give me some of that bread you have over there Impwan said leaning up against the gate to Gilman's hideout. Impwan extended his hand. Ah, uh, okay Gilman said and then handed the purple Digimon a piece of bread. After eating it Impwan extended his hand and asked for more. More he said as he finished another roll. More Gilman complied. Wow you must really like that bread that Takato gave me Gilman said. Impwan stopped chewing and spat out the mixture of flour, yeast and water. Nanny, what the hell are you talking about you baka? I hate this bread and besides why are you locked up like a little puppy eh? Why don't you leave that disgusting human of yours and hand out with me and I'll show you how to have fun Impwan said. No Takato said I need to stay here until he comes back for me in the morning the red dinosaur looking Digimon said. Impwan made a disgusted face. Oh come on. If Takato was your friend he would let you be free and you are happy when you're playing and you don't want to be unhappy do ya? Impmon asked. Gilman thought for a while and then saw Impmon leave and walk down the stairs. Gilman then thought some more. Ah oh, screw it. Oi Impmon wait for me the red dinosaur called. Later on Impmon was with Gilman hiding in the bushes. So is this what do you do for fun? Gilman asked. Hiding in the bushes is not fun. SHHH Pineapple Head now watch me scare the pants of off these here humans Impwan whispered and then a red fireball flickered to life on the tip of the tiny Digimon's finger. Gilman watched as Impmon made the fireball circle the couple as if it were a haunted or something and the couple ran off in fear. Ha ha ha, watch him run. I'm going home Gilman said. Ha hey where you going you lousy Digimon you just suck. Ibaka, I don't need you Impmon said and then huffed before going back into the trees to go scare more people. Gilman's hideout. Takato, Naruto and Doraman looked in the empty shed where Gilman was supposed to be. Gilman dot no, he really did it. Takato said. What did I do Takato? Gilman asked as he climbed the steps. Takato turned to see Gilman standing there behind Naruto and Doraman. Gilman where the hell were you? Nowhere Takato, well first I was here but then I met Impmon who told me I should have some fun so then we went to scare some people and they ran. But then I got bored and came back here the dinosaur Digimon said. Takato froze when he heard that. You did what? Takato said. Naruto and Doraman looked between Takato and Gilman and saw Takato with an angry face and Gilman with a sad and confused look. Takato what's wrong? Gilman asked. That's it Gilman. I've given you the benefit of the doubt before, but now this is going too far. Takato roared. Gilman took a step back. Takato. No Gilman, I've had it with you. I hate you. Takato then took off down the stairs and was about to run back home. Naruto and Doraman and Gilman were shocked that Takato would say such a thing. What did I do wrong? Gilman asked his ears dropped in sadness. Nothing Gilman. But really did you scare those people? Doraman asked. Well no, Impmon was showing me how to do it for fun. But I didn't see scaring people as fun when I was in the bushes so I got bored and left Gilman explained. Doraman and Naruto nodded. Come on Gilman, you have to tell Takato this Doraman said. The red virus type nodded to his fellow Digimon and the three raced down the stairs after Takato. With Takato, Takato was running through the park with tears streaming from his eyes. God damn it Gilman, why did you do it? Don't you understand that I don't want to lose you Takato said to himself. 
Then he stopped when he heard a voice call him. Takato. Takato turned around to see a brown-haired woman wearing a blue jacket over a yellow shirt and a gray pair of jeans and black flat heel shoes. Ms. Yuzagi what are you doing here? Takato asked. Well the school suggested that the teachers look through the park in order to check out to see who this maniac child is that scaring people you know Takato I could ask you what you are doing here. Ms. Yuzagi asked. Takato gulped and sweat dropped. Well you don't think I'm the guy do you? He asked in disbelief I was just taking a leisurely stroll through the park Ms. Yuzagi chuckled and waved her hand in a negative motion. No Takato but you should get home your parents must be worried Ms. Yuzagi said. Takato nodded but before he headed out his the arc began beeping and Ms. Yuzagi as well Takato felt a strong breeze. The two looked up and saw a digital field open up in the sky and then the shadow of a large dragon-like creature formed. The dragon-like creature's four demonic red eyes opened and then it flew down and swiftly over both Ms. Yuzaga's and Takato's heads. Both people ducked down. That was no pigeon Ms. Yuzagi. Takato are you? As Ms. Yuzagi turned to ask Takato if he was fine she looked to see the goggle-wearing boy had disappeared. Takato. Takato had taken off after the flying Digimon and quickly ran off after it. However as he was running he looked to right and saw Doraemon, Naruto and Gilman running next to him having appeared out of the bushes. Did you see it? Takato asked. Of course kind of hard to miss a giant dragon Digimon flying in the sky Naruto said. The four then chased after the giant black dragon Digimon before it settled down on top of the lightning rod atop the Hypnos building. Yamaki looked outside the window of the Hypnos building and growled. Stupid wild ones, why didn't Riley deploy Yugoth to stop it? Dot 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 oh right, I sent Riley home Yamaki realized. So who is worthy to fight? The Digimon asked itself as it scanned the area below it with its four large red eyes. Then it spotted Takato and Gilman. Ah oh, there you are the large Digimon growled and bared its sharp teeth. Then it swooped down like an eagle diving down on its prey. Naruto and Doraemon jumped in front of their fellow tamer and Digimon before Naruto charged a Racingan in his hand and Doraemon sped through the air as he performed Hyper Dash Metal. Racingan, Hyper Dash Metal. The two crashed their attacks against the dragon's head. But the Digimon grabbed Doraemon in its large hand and blocked Naruto's attack with the other before grabbing Naruto and throwing both down and causing a crater in the ground below. Naruto and Doraemon groaned in pain and struggled to sit up. Itai, Itai, Itai the two moaned. Takato took out his D-Arc and saw the incoming Digimon. Gilman jumped onto the Digimon's face and coated his claws with fire. Rock Breaker, the virus-type Digimon cried and brought down his flaming claws and injured the Digimon causing it to veer away from Takato's location. The red D-Arc in Takato's hand then beeped and the holographic image of the Digimon appeared. The Digimon was a large black dragon with four red eyes and sharp teeth. On its head were two spiked ears like Gilman's except in black and there was a skull pattern on its left shoulder. It had four large black and torn looking wings, extremely long arms with one arm being wrapped in bandage around the wrist and the other had a red bat looking symbol. Both arms had red claws while its muscular legs, the right leg having its veins visible through the skin, had black claws like the rest of its body. The length of its tail seemed to be a darker black. Dividraman, champion level. Gilman better be careful when he fights him. He tears the enemy with his long arms and flies in the darkness with his strong wings. When someone is caught staring into his four crimson eyes, they can no longer move and are torn apart. He has a merciless and violent nature. His attacks are crimson claw and red eyes. Dividraman grabbed Gilman from his face and threw the young rookie level down onto the ground. Gilman grunted in pain as he formed a crater in the ground. But then his virus nature began to pull through as his pupils dilated in anger. Gilman got up and rolled out of the way as Dividraman tried to ram into him. Gilman then opened his mouth and a red energy sphere of flame and energy formed. Pyrosphere. Multiple red fireballs were shot out of the jaws of the rookie Digimon and at the champion level. Dividraman took the attacks like they were nothing by batting them away with his wings. Then using the darkness of the night sky to his advantage, Dividraman seemed to have disappeared from view. Gilman growled and sniffed the air as he tried to pinpoint the enemy Digimon's location. Then Gilman rolled to his right as Dividraman swooped down from above and then Gilman spun and slammed his hard tail against Dividraman's jaw in an attempt to hit the opponent. That tickled Dividraman said as he paused when Gilman's tail hit him. Now let me show you a real attack. Dividraman growled before grabbing Gilman and slamming the smaller virus type into the ground three times before throwing Gilman upwards into the air and then punching him sending Gilman into a wall. A hole formed as Gilman crashed into it and Gilman lay there. Meanwhile as this happened, Henry, Terrierman, Rika and Renamon arrived to see Naruto, and Doraemon lying in a large crater with Takata watching as Gilman was being thrown into a wall by a Dividraman. 
Well looks like Gogglehead needs help Rika said, but Renamon put out her arm to stop her tamer. No, don't interfere this is Gilman's fight the fox Digimon said. But Renamon. No Rika, we must respect that this is Gilman's battle Renamon said a bit more forcefully. Rika huffed, but stayed put and watched as Davidraman flew down and crouched before wrapping his tail around Gilman's body and began to squeeze. Gilman roared in pain as Takato watched. Takato help him. Naruto yelled as he and Doraman managed to stand to their feet. What happened to you? Henry asked. I tried to fight Davidraman while he was in the sky that's what and I fell Naruto said. Same here Doraman said. You survived falling from the sky. Terriermon asked. Shinobi and awesome Digimon here, remember? Doraman said with a duff face. Takato then ran up to Gilman and drew a card and swiped it. Digimodify, power activate. Takato yelled. Gilman's pyrosphere grew larger as the rookie Digimon had already tried to fire an attack before it crashed against Davidraman's face. However, the champion level didn't budge. Takato, Doraman yelled. What? Takato replied. It wasn't Gilman who was the culprit in the park, it was some puppy kicker Digimon called Impmon. Now say Goman Nasai and help your partner. Naruto and Doraman exclaimed. Really, then I got mad. For no reason Takato said and stared as Gilman was getting the life squeezed out of him. Takato dot help Gilman managed to say. Takato looked at Gilman. Gilman, Goman Nasai, I'm sorry I was mad at you earlier. I don't hate you, you're the best friend a tamer could ever have and I don't want to lose you so please fight back and stay with me. Takato cried as a few tears streamed down his face. Everyone's eyes then widened as Takato's D-Arc then released a white light, and then Naruto looked to the left and in the trees spotted a red triangle-shaped light. Good timing Kaluman Naruto thought with a smile, and then watched as Gilman began to glow a bright crimson color and blinded Davidraman causing the champion Digimon to release his captive. A red egg of data then formed around Gilman, just as how a green egg formed around Terriermon and a blue one around Renamon. Gilman's skin then peeled away to reveal a darker red form that was patterned in a wireframe pattern. The skin then reattached itself to form a larger, more powerful form of Gilman. Gilman digivolved to Growlman. Growlman roared as he snorted flames through his nostrils. Growlman was a large version of Gilman except the ears were now like spikes and two blade-like protrusion came from his elbows and Gilman seemed to look a lot more reptilian looking with a mane of silver white hair growing from the back of his head. Black band-like patterns with digicode on them were shown on his legs, forearms and around the thick part of his tail. The zero unit was emblazoned on his feet and hands while the digital hazard symbol was located on his left shoulder. All right, he digivolved into Growlman. Takato yelled in excitement, he's just how I pictured him. He's huge. Henry exclaimed as the tamers and their Digimon gazed up at the large newly digivolved champion Digimon. Growlman and Davidraman stared each other down before Davidraman made the first move. His claws glowed crimson before he made slashing motions. Crimson Claw. The Black Dragon yelled and then slashed at Growlman. Growlman dot growled dot and avoided the attacks before grabbing one of Davidraman's arms before planting a knee into the Digimon's stomach. Growlman then spun and threw Davidraman away sending the other champion Digimon into the nearby river. Davidraman growled as he stood to his feet, but was shocked as he saw Growlman already standing above him. Fast he thought before Growlman grabbed Davidraman by his throat and threw the Digimon upwards and then the blade protrusions on his arms glowed with blue energy. Growlman then performed an uppercut motion, dragon slash, and then the two blue blades of electric blue slammed against Davidraman's chin sending the devil dragon Digimon upwards. Davidraman quickly spread his wings and then dived down with speeds of a jet and slammed his body against Growlman's. Growlman was grabbed by his throat and dragged along the river, his body being scraped as digital flesh was sometimes being torn away by the rocks below. Davidraman then saw Growlman's eyes glow red and his elbow blades glow blue. Dragon Slash, Crimson Eyes, Davidraman countered and then his four eyes glowed red and Growlman froze in place. Then Davidraman took Growlman skyward and the two champions flew up into the night sky. Going up and then Davidraman dropped Growlman onto a bridge that was made over the river. Growlman roared as he fell and crashed into the bridge breaking it and then falling into the still moving river. A large cloud of smoke and a large splash of water resulted from Growlman's impact. Then Davidraman swooped down and with a yell of Crimson Claw. Growlman was knocked away. Growlman's eyes glowed crimson and then he flipped in the air and then landed on his feet. Where did he learn to do that? Rika asked. From us Doruman and Naruto said with satisfaction. Doruman then got an idea. Growlman, use attack plan 5. Doruman cried out to his friend. Growlman looked at Davidraman's tail and smiled before nodding. Growlman then took off. Crimson Claw. Davidraman yelled and swiped at Growlman. 
but Growlman ducked under the attack and went to slam his and blow blades into Devidraman's chin. But the Black Dragon stopped the Red Dragon's attack by grabbing the elbow blade before trying to bit down on Growlman's arm. However, Growlman escaped the hold, but then Devidraman slammed his ebony tail against Growlman's face sending the Red Dragon skidding backwards before Devidraman flew forward and planted a clawed foot into Growlman's stomach sending Growlman to the ground. Devidraman then picked up Growlman and repeatedly punched him in the face before throwing Growlman across the river and into a tree, knocking the defenseless pace of woodland greenery to the ground. Growlman quickly rolled to the side as Devidraman's crimson claw attack tried to hit him. Growlman then executed attack plan 5. He quickly performed a cat spring, kicking Devidraman in his stomach and sending the black dragon to the ground while simultaneously pushing Growlman to his feet. It was win-win for Growlman. Then Growlman took off and grabbed Devidraman and punched him in the jaw, knocking out a few teeth and caused a Devidraman-shaped crater in the ground. The force of the blow caused Devidraman to bounce back up and then Growlman's blades glowed electric blue. Double Dragon Slash Growlman roared and then slashed Devidraman's back with enough force to send him skyward. Then Growlman opened his mouth as Devidraman fell back down. A large ball of orange and red flame formed in his open maw as Growlman used his most powerful attack. Pyro Blaster, Growlman roared and then a large fireball with a stream of flame following it, making the attack look like a burning comet, flew from Growlman's maw. Devidraman screamed as the attack made contact and then Devidraman exploded and Growlman absorbed the Digimon's data. Growlman smiled with a satisfied toothy smile and then turned to Takato. Takato looked at Growlman in shock and fear. Growlman, don't hurt me please Takato pleaded. Growlman paused and looked confused at Takato. What do you mean Takato? Did I scare you? Growlman asked. Takato looked in shock as Growlman stared at him with concern in his golden eyes. Um, um no not at all. So how do you to digivolve? Takato asked. I mean you can't fit back into the hideout Takato said. Naruto smirked and walked over to Growlman and drew a card from his card case. Leave that to me Narut said placing a hand on the 12 year old tamer's shoulder. Doruman. Naruto barked. Hi Doruman said and then ran past Naruto before jumping into the air. Digimodify, data extraction activate. Naruto yelled swiping the card. A, N, this card is my own and is spelt as it is shown so there is no E. As well as the Grayman's Nova Blast, Geo Grayman's Mega Flame, the collaboration techniques as well as any other card that you have not seen in the Digimon Tamers anime. Doruman's paw and claws glowed a ruby red color before he touched the digital hazard symbol on Growlman's shoulder. Growlman and the others watched in awe as Doruman's paw began extracting the data, and the red gem on Doruman's head glowed. Doruman then stopped when Growlman reverted back into Gilman. The purple dragon rookie Digimon then touched the ruby triangle on his head and a ball of red data was held in his paw. That is the data that was used to make Growlman. But seeing as how Gilman can now digivolve he will have no use for this data. He still has the data he absorbed from Devidraman though Naruto explained. Where did you get that card? Rika asked. I found it in a pack Naruto stated. Naruto then nodded to Doruman and then caused even more surprise when Naruto formed hand signs. Suten, Suryuden no Jutsu, Water Style, Water Dragon Blast Jutsu. Naruto said and then the water from the river rose up in a pillar before taking on the shape of a dragon with glowing yellow eyes. The dragon roared before Doruman threw the extracted data into the air and the water dragon enveloped the red ball of data, and it was no more. Sugoi, amazing. Everyone besides Naruto and Doruman exclaimed. Naruto and Doruman then bowed before turning and left for home. Takato said goodbye to his friends and then everyone else from the group of 12-year-olds and one 13-year-old tamer left the destroyed area. It was this though that stopped Naruto as he formed more hand signs. Daten, Tsuchai Kaifuku no Jutsu, Earth Style, Earth Restoration Jutsu. He said, clapping his hands together before slamming his right hand on the ground. A burst of earth chakra pulsed through the ground and then the broken sidewalks. The streets and even the destroyed bridge were repaired as if time itself had gone backwards and repaired the damage done by the Digimon battle. Naruto and Doruman then nodded in satisfaction before leaving. Meanwhile in Hypno's HQ, Yamaki's eyes widened as he saw the whole thing. The battle between the Digimon Ak, the wild ones and the power that they held. They are a threat that must be stopped Yamaki growled. The damage they've caused will be impossible to create a cover story for. However, Yamaki's eyes widened as he saw the blonde wild one tamer with the purple dragon wild one. Perform weird hand signs and then a large water dragon engulfed a ball of what looked like red data. Then he watched the brown-haired kid with the red dinosaur that had evolved somehow along with the Asian with the bunny dog wild one and the red-haired girl with the golden and white-furred fox wild one leave. 
However, the surprises weren't about finished for just as the head of Hypnos was about to turn around he saw the blonde kid form more hand signs and then slammed his hand on the ground and Yamaki watched as time itself seemed to be reversed as the damage done by the battle being removed as if it were never there. Interesting. Good thing my sunglasses have a built-in camera and I recorded this entire event. That blonde kid has piqued my curiosity though. The power he has over the elements just what is he? He's not a wild one that much I can tell Yamaki thought. He then went into the office and plugged in the tiny microchip in his sunglasses where the video recording device was and then placed it into the Hypno's computer hard drive. Images of the scene replayed itself. Yamaki fast-forwarded the video before stopping it on the image of Naruto looking at Doraemon and the two of them smiling at each other. Focusing on these two, Yamaki stared at them with unmatched curiosity. Just who is this boy? So alright folks that's all for today. Stay tuned for part 3. Do subscribe, like and share for more such videos. Press the bell icon to be notified first on release. See you in the next video till then goodbye.